Okay, can you hear me now, my friends? So we're, I have people on live with me. They can say if they can hear me now. So we're testing new microphones, new technology, trying to get it all going. So please let me know in the yay. Hello. Thank you. Good morning, Leslie, Yvonne, and Kay. Welcome, welcome. So glad you're here with me this morning. Super excited for our four hours of painting freedom. I will be here for four hours. I don't know if anyone else will be or not, but my goal is to do four paintings in four hours. And I'm super, super excited to be here with all of you joining you this morning. So glad we've got everything working now. Thank you, Leslie. And um, we have a whole new setup, so it's brand new today. We're just getting used to all of it. My techie husband's over here supporting me and helping me with the setup. So um, bear with us as we get things going, but I think we have it all going. Uh, good morning, Margaret. I am happy to be here live with all of you this morning. And what's on my mind today is this theme of painting freedom and uh, thinking about independence. And for me, painting freedom is a lot about the lusciousness of time that I don't often gift myself. Happy fourth, Tori, great to be here with you. Having the, the sort of longer periods of, of creative time that I don't often gift myself that extra amount of time. And a lot of times, you know, I might spend four hours or four days on a painting. And so today my goal is to do four paintings in four hours. I'm super excited to be here. It's absolutely my pleasure. Leslie, who was here at the retreat, says, good morning, Brad. So he's working out all the, the bugs here for just a minute. So bear with us for just a second as he's working on that uh, technology as we get going. So what I'm going to be painting on is I have some old recycled pieces of wood. My dear friend Rebecca Zendejas, she is at Zendo House on Instagram, makes these absolutely gorgeous sort of personal altars for people. And before I left Galita, she'd given me a whole bunch of like leftover pieces of wood from her woodworking studio. And so super, super excited to be painting on these today. They're all different sizes. I don't necessarily have a specific plan for which is which, except I'm gonna start with the, the big one because I might paint on it and come back to it later. But part of painting freedom, something magical happens when you work on multiple pieces at the same time. It can lead to more coherence and symmetry in your work. It can allow you to really explore and play with different color palettes. Are we all good to go? Okay. Okay, all right, we're going with it for now. So, um, and we may pause later. So how this is gonna work today, I'm gonna start by painting on all four canvases and then I have a different idea for where I wanna take each canvas. Everybody's saying, thank you, Brad, thank you, Brad, in the chat. Okay. Yep, it's all good. So we're, we're curious, so I'm sitting right by our air conditioning unit, which is very loud. And my other headset did a great job of getting rid of the background noise, but it had all these weird sounds on the recordings. And so we're trying a new headset. We have a new camera, um, a lot of new today. And um, the first time I'm doing a four hour live stream. So I'm so curious to see how this is gonna go. Um, but I love painting across four canvases at the same time. So I'm gonna get them all started the same way. And then at some point I will diverge. It's, it's not on, hi Anne, welcome, welcome. It's not on currently, it's still pretty cool here, but it's supposed to be in the 80s today. So we'll see if, if the, sometime in the four hours it kicks, kicks in, never know. It's nice and cool down here in the basement though, and not freezing. Um, so how this is going to work is I'm going to paint for probably about 50, 55 minutes and I will take a break at the top 
of each hour and I will leave a sign that you know says I will be right back when I'm taking a break. I think it's so important I can sit here uh, for four hours and, and not move or go to the bathroom or get more water. And so it's important to get up and stretch at the, as I get older and my body feels stiffer. It's important to move. So I will take a break at the, the top of each hour to, you know, refill my coffee and all those kind of good things. And I'm super excited. So let me change my camera here. And I'm wondering, so like I said, new camera. So if I zoom way out and make these kind of like a puzzle, I haven't picked a, a color palette yet for today, but I don't know that it necessarily matters for this first part. So this might be a fun way to just kind of get started uh, on all four of them. And I just want to get a little paint, a little color, down on all of them. So my goal for today is I, I kind of came up with some fun ideas. Leslie asked me yesterday what I was going to be doing today. I'm like, I don't know. I'll figure it out when I wake up. And I've been thinking about it. So the first one I want to do is I'm going to do a redactive painting, which was one of my favorite ways to create an abstract background, then take a shape, you know, and paint out everything around the shape. I had a, a lot of fun on my walk yesterday. So you guys can here see how my crazy brain works and I noticed my shadow as I was walking and taking pictures and I'm like these would make super cool paintings so I want to play with this idea of of the shadow today in this redactive painting I even like the the background here and so I took a few different um, shadow pictures I also noticed the th reason I decided on circles as my theme for today, I don't think I said that, but circles are going to be my theme for today because I'm a little obsessed with circles. I have a membership called Sacred Circles, which I will tell you more about today. And on my walks, I've been noticing how there's circles everywhere. The flowers are circled. This is some kids uh, chalk painting, you know, the, the just the signage. There were circles in the signage. So circles are all around us and they're one of the oldest symbols, right, from across time. Um, and let's see, so I want to do some intuitive circle play and some abstract painting. Of course, I will, if we're talking about circles, I have to do a what we call a sacred circle or mandala design. And then the sunflowers are blooming here. And so I think I'm going to paint um, a sunflower. I will be using acrylic paint on wood panel and my Posca paint markers. Yeah, I'm super curious to play to maybe do a series with the with the with the shadow bits, Tori, and see what happens. And I'm kind of thinking this one maybe feels like the circle or that shadow is going to go on that one. So we'll see. But one of the things that I love to do to start is just to get something down on my blank canvas. <clears throat> Mostly I hope my voice will hold out for four hours, we'll see. Um, and you may find me sometimes just painting in silence as well. But I want to start just by getting some words, some energy, some marks. And I'm just kind of randomly picking. So I'm ending up kind of with some primary colors here, red, blue, and yellow appropriate for, you know, Independence Day here in the United States, sort of that red, white, and blue. And so, you know, I'm, some of the thoughts that are on my mind are freedom, independence, celebration, hmm, relaxation. It's a pretty red connection to nature. So my husband went for a bike ride early this morning and he came back right as I was getting ready to go out the door for my morning walk and he's like oh my gosh you have to go to this spot because all the flowers are blooming and so it was a, a little bit um, took me a little more time but was so worth it and made me feel a little rushed when I got back but I'm so glad I went because it was so beautiful. So morning walks are the best. 
and my phone is so full of nature photos it's time to post some I haven't posted any at all and I feel like I'm racing into this because I felt like I got here um, a little later like I had set up before I left but I could just be relaxing um, these are just plain old cheap oil pastels and uh, Neo Color 2s, I absolutely love them, but they're water soluble and I wanted something so the oil pastel will actually act like a resist for this. So these are oil pastels and they're not water soluble, but boy, do I love my Neo Color 2s. Um, so maybe breathe. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, maybe fireworks, like none of this is going to show later, right? And there's something playful about just getting energy out of me and onto the canvas so that I can decide where to go next. So these boards have all been gessoed on the front and some of them on the edges. This one had a few other layers of paint on it, but these have not had any paint on them. Painting on wood, exactly, exactly, and I want it to act like a resist. Um, and you'll see we might do some scratching through to get back to some of that, you know, color and texture underneath. Because we have completely reset everything, not all of my supplies are right at hand either, so I might have to move around my studio a little bit. Oops. Um, hmm, this bright green just popped its eye out of my box here. And this is just kind of a, a crazy collection. I really like actually for this process the Pentel, but I also have some really inexpen expensive Sargent ones and then some more um, expensive. This one is a Car into Ash oil pastel. They're super, super creamy. I do really like them, but they don't work as well for a resist, but that yellow was really speaking to me. So I bought this gorgeous book on my Kindle and then I forgot about the book and I was flipping through my Kindle this week to see what I had in there. And there's this fantastic book all about the history of the circle and how the circle has appealed or has appeared in every culture around the world really since the beginning of time and since people started making marks so cave paintings right so there were circles there were spirals representations of the sun and the moon in early art Kind of a weird green but I fell in love with circles some of you have heard this story when I discovered my first mandala coloring book in a Barnes and Noble in Plano Texas probably 15 years ago and started coloring with my kiddos on the couch on a Sunday afternoon pulled out my big box of Prismacolor colored pencils that probably hadn't even looked at since my university days. All right, you can see I'm having fun just making a big old mess here. I don't care what this looks like. I just want to get some color, some energy down on the page. And what started as just this simple coloring book fun led me to a lot of exploration, a love of mandalas, a love of zendalas, which are zentangle inspired mandala designs, led me to become a certified zentangle teacher, which really started my whole journey to using art as a creative practice for self-discovery and personal growth. I'm also a certified soul collage facilitator, which is a, another big part of that journey for me. Is that a different, oh, that is, that's a different blue. 
And circles have always featured prominently in my art. In fact, Leslie, when you are here, I have one of Brad's <clears throat> favorite paintings is in our bedroom that's a series of abstract circles. That was one of my early, early paintings. And then upstairs in the guest bedroom is another favorite one that's also all circles. So I can't stop drawing them, painting them, and I'm not alone. Think about cathedral windows. Think about Buddhist mandalas. Think about medicine wheels and labyrinths and clocks and signs. There are so, come on Diego, you wanna come say hello? Diego's gonna come play. So there are so many different ways that circles are still used as symbols throughout culture, even in the earliest writing. All right, buddy, you're too big. Even in the earliest forms of cuneiform writing, the circle was used as a, a symbol in that writing. So I'm gonna come in with some clear gesso and put a layer of clear gesso over the top of these. And that was one thing I did not grab was my dryer. I'm kind of down at the bottom of the barrel here with this. And the reason that I'm going to put the clear gesso over the top is because it's going to allow me to kind of seal in that oil pastel a little bit. I don't always do this, but then if I want to be able to scratch back through to find some of that color, I'll be able to do that. And I know these look like a crazy totally random mess. If you didn't have clear gesso, you could also seal a layer like this with matte medium. And if you're just joining us live this morning, welcome. Thank you for sharing some of your day with me. Super excited to be here painting freedom for four hours today. I've had a lot of long, luscious, creative time this weekend. I painted a lot on Sunday morning, finally finished a, a big wolf that's been sitting on my easel for a while, and now I'm finishing up another painting that I started a year ago and I never hung up because I couldn't figure out what was up with it. But my friend Lainey was here and she says, well, what about da-da-da? And that one idea was exactly that next step that I needed to get me on the path. So. You know, people often ask, how do you know when a piece is done? And I'm like, you just know, but to not rush it and to sort of take your time. And if it had sat for a year and I still couldn't figure it out and I really didn't love it, I might have decided just to paint over it and start something new. But I knew it was just missing something. So it is on its way now and I'm excited about finishing it up. I am not like, you know, I hear a lot of people complain about unfinished projects and not being able to finish things. Like I either finish them, hi Blanca, yes, all day freedom, amen. So I am grateful to enjoy a lot of freedom in my life. And I don't like unfinished projects. They bug me. The, the weight of them holds me down. It's like, you know, open loops in conversations or in projects, you know, that when they're unfinished, they take up mental space. So I really love a good finished project. And yet sometimes I get impatient. So I've learned or I'm learning at 15, 58 years old to practice some patience with my own creative process. And what I've discovered is that if I just tuck things away out of sight and then look at them again later, then I usually know what's next. If I just take a breath, walk away, come back, like the wolf painting sat on my easel probably for about a month and I would add a little paint and get a layer done and then I would be like 
okay, I'm not sure where this is going. It got really stuck in the messy middle. And you can see that wolf painting on my Instagram or my Facebook page. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan pretty much everywhere on the internet. And I'm wondering what, aha, my dryer is right here. Fantastic. So what I love about craft dryers is that they just speed up the, the process of art and allow us to move along a lot quicker. So I'm going to get these dry and then I'm going to decide where to go next. And actually looking at them, I know where I'm going to go next. I want to keep playing and making a uh, thank you, Tori. I was pretty happy with it. Um, the place that I want to go next, I think, is it needs some black. So I'm going to do some stenciling and stamping over the top, continuing to build up the layers. OK, so I'm curious, new headset with this headset. Can you hear the dryer in the background? I know with the other headset, you guys said you could not. This will help us with knowing about the air conditioning noise, too. So I'm going to get these nice and dry before I go on to my next layer. OK, you do hear it. All right, good to know. Thank you, but pretty muted. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, bear with me for just a minute. Gesso takes a long time to dry. And it's really humid here today. So um, it might take a little longer to dry, but it's dry-ish. So I'm just going to go with it. And I'm going to find some black acrylic paint. I love that, Anne, that I have an unfinished sunflower painting. Maybe I could work on that today. Yes. Um, you know, like how much fun would it be to work on that or what's possible if you work on that? I love that you didn't say should because I agree we should never ever should on ourselves. And I'm working on a piece of butcher paper, which I love. I buy these big sheets like this from my friend Andrea at a work of heart studio. And um, what I love about them is that they work great to protect your service, but they can also just be used as a palette. And speaking of Andrea, I have one of her awesome polka dotted stencils here. And that's going to mix a little bit with that gesso, which is probably just going to create some interesting transparency on the pages. And again, I am, whatever I'm doing on one right now, I'm going to do on a, another. And um, yep, exactly, Blanca. And the other thing I learned early on when I started painting, and I started painting probably now about, I don't know, 10 years ago, and um, is that I wanted to keep painting. Like if I had set time aside to paint, I wanted to keep going. I didn't know about craft dryers. And I would get impatient, and everything would just end up being kind of muddy. And it was really frustrating and I couldn't understand, you know, what was happening. Well, I wasn't being patient to let my layers dry in between, which is the other benefit of working on multiple pieces at the same time. So I usually have two to three projects going at a time, like one of them may be painting something in my art journal, I might have a collage or a stitching project. So or it's fun to paint like this, because as one layer dries on one, then I can move on to another layer on the next one. So if you've never worked this way, kind of on multiple pieces at the same time, it can be super, super fun to do that. Let's see, I've got some X's here. This is a handmade stamp. I love making handmade stamps, so fun. And this is feeling fun and very, very messy at the moment. And so I'm getting to where I'm like, mm. I'm getting tired of the messy. So I'm probably gonna come back in, add some color 
maybe even go back in over the whole thing with some gesso but I want to get a few more marks and textures. So why am I creating these like super messy layers here? Because that's where the sort of intensity, the magic, the mystery of a piece when you see mixed media artists who have these really layered pieces, they always start with play, right? They start in this just sort of, you know, very random way of building layers because color looks differently on a background. So if you've ever seen, um, especially oil painters will do this, but uh, like landscape painters, there's always a background color on which they paint on top of. And so this is a way of getting so uh, back on, um, just still having fun with that black. This is a way of building up some of that color and all of it is going to show through just a little bit at the end and even if it doesn't, it adds texture to the boards that I'm working on. So it's just a, a, a fun and less intimidating approach than going right in directly with whatever our topic of the day is. Now, if I'm doing one of my Zentangle inspired animal paintings, I would just come in with a flat color over the top and it's a different process, but I love these really abstract processes like this. And as I'm sitting here kind of moving on, um, and I'm sorry, it's overcast. Maybe it will uh, burn off. You know, it, you guys are still stuck in some June gloom over there. Um, I had my palette just sort of pop into my head. It's completely unrelated to anything, but it just happens to be one of my my favorite blends of colors so some teal blue maybe some naples yellow or yellow ochre if i can find some and where's my favorite oh i do like this mars violet so this is a version of primary colors right it's a version of primary colors that's cadmium red i'm looking for my magenta and it can be really fun to play with your primary colors, but to look at some off colors, like not the, the normal, I'm finding lots of reds, but I'm not finding my magenta. So bear with me for a moment. And I know I have some in here. And if I don't, it's going to make me sad. There's some quinacridone magenta. Thanks to my mom who cleaned out her studio lately. And I really benefited from that. And I'm definitely going to want some white. And we already have our black. And that may be all I need. Um, I'm feeling like it's probably going to want maybe some fun gold or some copper because boy do I love a good metallic. Still not quite the magenta I was looking for, but I wanted my Nova color magenta and it's probably buried in here somewhere and it will turn up when we're, aha, there it is. It was just in the wrong bucket. I have all my paints uh, separated. So I love Nova Color paints. Most of you have heard me talk about them. And I think Blanca, you heard me say they're actually in Los Angeles and you can go visit their uh, factory where they make art. So, or where they make paint and all the different mediums as well. So what I'm feeling at the moment I think I'm just going to put some color down and see what happens and um, if I don't like it then I can just paint over it all. I've got a nice big bottle of gesso but I think I want to come in with these colors right over the top and it's not uncommon for me to put down a lot of layers and then decide I don't like any of it and go back over it all with white, but again, it just adds character to all of the layers. So we're still in just those very, very early layers. Those are probably gonna blend together and make some greens. 
my paint is still a little bit wet underneath too so I'm going to probably get a little bit of smearing and I'm using a catalyst wedge it's one of my oh awesome Blanca I love that um, it's one of my favorite tools for these early layers for getting really thin transparent color down on canvas and I'm also feeling almost like I'm ready to start zeroing in on one canvas and setting the others aside. Let's see, I think maybe some of this heavy body magenta. And that's looking, it's such a pretty color. And let's see what that does on there. And what's cool with these three colors, I can make some beautiful purples, some gorgeous greens. I can mix them all together and create probably a nice brown or get close to a black. All right, so something's happening here and it's a big happy mess. My fingers are painty. I'm feeling good. So what are other people working on this morning? I'd love to hear. So part of this is not to paint what I'm painting, but to be together in just creative community and work on finishing up our own projects. So I love hearing what you are up to. Okay, that magenta and sort of turquoisey teal combo always makes me so, so happy. So I can see where I'm not getting it quite all the way to the edges. I can see where that's blending there and just making such a beautiful, beautiful purple. We got some happy, messy stuff going on here. And... I think maybe I'm going to take the end of my brush and do a little bit of more mark making on these. Nice. Margaret's working on a stitching piece started in 2019. Brilliant. Applying black gesso to both sides of all cards in a pack for an upcoming class. Ooh, I love creating decks um, on uh, cards like that. That's one of my favorite processes. I took a fun class with Seth Apter many, many moons ago where we did a deck of cards like that and I loved how they came out. So much fun. So you can see when I'm just using the end of a paintbrush to scratch through which is going to create again more texture on each of the pages or each of the the panels and it's pushing back to some of that color so I can still see what's underneath down there as well. And I love that effect of seeing all the oh, awesome, so fun. I love that you're doing that class. Seth's such a great teacher too. And just an absolutely lovely human being. So again, still in the fun, playful, really messy layers of this. And so what I'm feeling is before I go any further, I need to slow down and let these get really dry and then I'm going to come back in maybe with some black, maybe with some white. I'm thinking I want to get more paint all the way to the edges. And this one is going to have the shadow on it. So I think I am going to set these others aside for right now and I'm going to focus in on one painting and getting this one really dry. So I'm loving where this one in particular is going. I also just really love squares. So that one feels really fun. 
been saving aluminum from the coffee can and attempting to make embossed flowers, decorated hearts. Oh, fun. I love that. That makes me think of the um, beautiful work and I have some some gorgeous earrings and Christmas ornaments and things from growing up in San Antonio and that feels like that iconic, you know, cultural Mexican work of the embossed tin. I love that. I love that. And Leslie, what is the, the class that Seth is teaching? So um, happy for you to share that here for people who are interested in Seth's class. Yvonne is asking. All right. So let's go ahead and zoom in, not out. There. So again, I have a new camera. I need to be careful not to get paint all over the new camera or my hubby will not be happy with me. All right, make sure that's focusing. So now I'm looking at just this one and can think about it definitely needs more of the yellow on it. It doesn't have quite enough yellow. And you'll see I absolutely love finger painting. It's great for working around the edges of things. Doesn't look like I gessoed the edges of this one. But when I'm painting on these scrap wood panels, I like to continue the paint and the design around the edges of the pieces. <laughs> See, my husband popped in. She's getting print on the, I didn't get it on the lens, maybe just on the part where, you know, I'm shifting focus. Next time I'll use a, a baby wipe first and, and clean up my hands. I mean, it's already all over the mouse and the keyboard and the, like everything else. I also love using my fingers to make marks. All right, so this one's looking kind of interesting. Doesn't have as much visual interest going on here and maybe kind of too many of those fingerprints. So maybe we're just gonna change that up a little bit. And while that's kind of drying, I'm gonna get some gesso on the edges of this piece as well. I know my hubby's listening in just so that uh, he can make sure all the technology is working, but he happened to listen in right at that moment when I was getting my painty fingers on the camera. Shh. So the thing about painting on scrap wood like this, I love I love doing it because it's it's recycled and um, great you know way to to use up leftover boards like this. But you definitely have to gesso it. Sometimes maybe even a couple of coats of gesso. It, the the boards are very thirsty, right? So they definitely soak up a lot of paint, and they def need to be sealed with that gesso. Hmm, I'm wondering if we just need to maybe bring some of that white in here a little bit. So again, it just feels like kind of that happy, messy, I can always take things in, take things out. I love when I push back and I get all the way back to the surface of the oil pastels down there. I can see some of that kind of showing through. So there's a lot we can do while the paint is still wet. Once it's dry, we have less opportunity. Although with acrylic, you know, you can often take a baby wipe and push back some of those layers. So I'm just literally playing with the paint that's on the surface to just give myself a moment to think about what's next. 
And I'm wondering, there's my baby wipes. So this is a, a catalyst wedge. I These are one of my favorite tools, but also I love, my husband laughs at me because I save um, old hotel key cards whenever we go stay at a hotel. I always keep the key card, right? Or old, you know, used gift cards or those sample credit cards they send in the mail. At one point, I think I even had Brad's old driver's license down here. Right, so um, anything with that sharp flat edge, they're great for mark making as well as for um, spreading paint and matte medium both. Okay, so kind of digging where this is going. What I'm noticing is if I'm gonna do this big circle on here with the shadow in the center and maybe that looks like a cake at a party that's fun so so I can kind of see on here where I have a lot of those yellow fingerprints right and maybe remember always to turn our piece around so there's more interesting things happening at the top up there but it's not quite there yet, right? Not quite what I want to call done. It definitely needs a little more white, a little more black. Maybe it needs some white stenciling on it at this point instead of some black. And what have I got here? I just grabbed a few things. I have some fun letters. Since we're working with shadow, letters feel kind of interesting. So let's see what we can do with these. So this was um, die cut letters that then I just randomly, on sticky back foam, that then I just randomly stuck on here. And it ends up just making really fun patterns that I always love. That's what it needed. It needed some white. I love the randomness of the text. So the white just calms everything down. Nicely, right? Just sort of pushes those layers back a bit without having to actually paint over the, the whole surface with white because I don't want to lose all that yummy goodness that's under there. And there might still be some paint on here, so I'm just going to get that off on another one. So then, you know, we start to build them up as we go. It's another great thing is to always have a blank canvas beside you to just add extra paint on. Thank you. Me too. So now it needs some black again to just, again, build up the layers. And I used gesso for the white stamping not white acrylic paint only because it was what was at hand and so one of the things to think about when you're creating any kind of painting or collage or art journal page is to think about contrast so and there's multiple ways to create contrast one way is with your lights and your darks making sure you have a nice combination of lights and darks and another way is in the size of shapes that you're using and so I the letters are big so now I'm going to come in with some of these super super tiny shapes on here and see if we can create some variation in what we got going on here. So I'm gonna come back to my black. My black makeup sponge. I go through makeup sponges like crazy. get all these little different shapes on here. You notice I'm just using parts and pieces of the stencil, right? I'm not trying to get a whole area or section of one pattern. I like the variety and variations. Okay, so now it's back to feeling messy again and it's going to be time to sort of 
calm that down here pretty soon. I'm going to dry that stencil off on something else. Okay, so I think this is about the, the size of the, the circle that I want. I just need to decide. I think that one's a little bit bigger than that one. Yep, but I like this one because I can see through it. This is my favorite, favorite tool for making mandala and circular designs. It's a helix drawing tool. And they're hard to find there. They seem to often be sold out. I'm not sure why, but you can find them at art supply stores and on occasionally on Amazon as well. I've been through lots of them over the years because they do tend to break. So I'm just kind of noticing. And I'm wondering if maybe this is going to have a couple of different circles. My other favorite tool, and this one I just got at an office supply store, is this nice Okay, so I think it's going to be interesting to maybe have a couple of couple of different circles on here. Of course, now I'm getting paint all over that tool as well. All right. Okay, so I'm thinking about where I'm going and this needs to get super, super dry before I add the next layer. That paint is layered on there pretty thickly, so let's just take a piece of paper. This is just a piece of scratch paper. Oh, no, it's pretty dry. Pull that paper off. What about some pink fluorescent paint? Hmm, interesting. Hi, Shelly. Welcome to painting in your PJs. Delighted that you're here. So I am painting on four different canvases and my goal is to do four paintings in four hours. We'll see how that works. So were you asking about uh, this Blanca? So it's not um, it's not a toy. It's actually a, a drafting tool. It's called a helix tool. So if you just search for Helix on Amazon, you will find it. Frisbees work great. Uh, dinner plates, like different sizes of dinner plates or bowls work great. Like I use everything. I use lid tops, like, you know, I look for things ar around the house, a bucket, right? Um, because I, I draw so much. Um, you know, it was worth investing in one of these and um, I've had these forever, but um, you definitely don't need fancy, fancy tools for drawing. Okay, so what I want to do next. So Shelly, right now I am doing a reductive painting. Some people say reductive, some people say reductive. I don't know, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint out um paint out the background and leave some circles showing and then see what happens inside of those circles and i think what i need to do that is my stabilo pencil so let me go grab that and i'll be right back Thank you. 
yes, it definitely feels like a toy because it's used for creating fun. I love that. So you're creating signatures and journals. So my um, afternoon project is definitely going to, I think I'm liking this part. Uh, I have a piece of fabric that I had started a painting on and I want to use it to make a, a journal cover. So I have an afternoon project in mind. I also got a beautiful new stitching book yesterday and so I might have to do some stitching on that. So I'm using a Stabilo Marksall because it's water soluble. All right, so I'll be able to see the, the edges of that circle. So there's one circle, two circles. It didn't seem like just one circle on the page was quite enough. This guy needs to be sharpened. Mm -hmm. So maybe we want one that goes off the edge. So loving all the little textury bits in the corner here. All right, so we have three circles on here and I am going to take a little bit of matte medium and just activate that Stabilo marks all so it stays there. So Shelly, some people are following along, some people are working on their own projects but I am going to do four different paintings all related to the theme of circles in one way or another. And with this one, I'm using one of my favorite processes, which is to create a crazy background and then to paint out everything that's around it and focus on what's inside of the circles. It's one of my favorite techniques that I love doing and it's always fascinating to see what ends up inside of the circles. And I'm already looking at the, the next painting and where that one's going, which feels really fun. So this is uh, taking, you know, longer than I thought. So we'll see how long it takes to get to, if I get four paintings done or not. But even if I have four started, it's, there's going to be, you know, so much opportunity for more play. So I think I want the background to be this nice Naples yellow. We're going to try it and see. And if we don't like it, we get to paint it over. You can tell I like this color because it's almost empty. Uh, yes, we can absolutely have it broken um, and have it broken into chapters so you can find the, the place again and there will be pauses in the in the video that I take that'll help you. But yeah, we can definitely do the do the chapter thing as well. And thanks for stopping by and enjoy your Independence Day event. All right. So what I love about this is that I'm not trying to completely cover up the background, but to keep this layer transparent. I may even wipe some of this layer away to get back to all the, the juicy goodness underneath. But this is a way to, to holding on to a lot of the fun mixed media, you know, stamping and all that energy that I put into building up the piece. I don't expect anyone to stay for the, the full four hours. Like my husband and I are just not big 4th of July fans. We don't like crowds and noise and being out in the hot sun. And we did go to our local lake with our daughter last summer 
for a few hours early in the morning and it was already packed and full. All right, so it's an interesting color. Hey, Carol, welcome, welcome. You're going to start a cat painting and a watercolor lesson. Brilliant. Glad you're here painting along with us, my friend. I bet it's hot and humid in Houston today. And sometimes those circles lose some of their roundness and need a little touch up. But I could call this finished right here, like this feels really pretty good, but I do want to add those shadowy silhouettes because it just feels interesting to be kind of somehow playing with that theme of shadow, like gazing at freedom. There feels like a lot of, you know, visually a lot of freedom and interest here. This one's feeling a little bit dark on the page. It doesn't, it's lost some of its blue and other colors, so it might need some little bits of touch-ups in there. And I think I will also come in, let's just come in with this guy. And get that yellow around the edges of the piece. So this, when you paint the edges of a painting or a canvas like this, it makes it feel more finished. And then it actually doesn't need to be framed. Right? It can just be have a hanger hung on the back. Awesome, that sounds fun, Yvonne. Are they like extra fancy candy boxes? All right. I love turning things into journals and uh, recycled journals. So fun. Definitely love me some bookmaking. Okay, that was not what I wanted. I'm going to keep that color. So what I love is just taking a baby wipe. And I'm just going to push some of that yellow back. So the yellow is there to really just help make the background feel cohesive. to make the circle stand out. So we want them, the background to be, you know, um, opaque enough. But I don't want to lose all of the decoration in the back. Yep, redacted painting. That's what I call it. Yeah, it's one of my favorite techniques. Okay. So now I want to think about those shadows. My photos. So I have these uh, sort of interesting shadows that I kind of was sort of obsessed with and I might need to go find a pencil sharpener. I know I don't know if you guys can see what I'm drawing on there but I'm going to paint it out here in a second. I love sort of, you know, arms raised, looking off into the distance there. And I need some water. Yes, I love low key things like this, right? Yeah, it's a lot, Margaret, it's a lot. Our kitties don't do too bad with the fireworks, but we used to, when I was growing up, we had one dog in particular that just was so, so hard on him and kind of 
I've never loved the, the, the noise of fireworks. Okay, I'm going to come back in with some black paint. I'm just kind of slowly build up the layers here. When I took the picture, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I'm wondering if maybe she needs to have a little bit of a dress on there. But just a super, super silhouette. Super simple silhouette. Again, we're, we're painting freedom, being inspired by, you know, what can we do? with that shape of the circle. What I love about the, the symbology of the circle historically is that, well, it means a lot of things, but especially in the, in the context of a mandala, is that idea that a circle represents the whole as well as all of the individual parts. And so this redactive painting is an interesting way to kind of look at the, the whole of the circle, right? And sort of there's a lot of chaos and yet there's this, you know, little bit of this shadowy self here as well that feels kind of fun. All right, so it's interesting. This silhouette might need a little bit of work on there. And then what if we did another one down here? But maybe just a longer, simpler one. All right, I love, love, love the silhouettes. Almost feeling like this needs to just be like a fun little bird or something here, or maybe even just a smaller person to continue with that theme. So there's all kind of thoughts in my head about the symbolism of these, you know, shadows looking out So this one looks very childlike. Right. So I'm going to call this one done for now. I think I'm going to come back at some point with my white Posca and add maybe a few more marks and break it up. Yes, yeah, Searching for Freedom is a great name for this one, Leslie. I love the, the silhouettes in the circles, but this one feels done for now. So I'm going to set this one aside. I'm going to go take a quick bathroom break. And when I come back, I'm going to do some just kind of fun um, abstract painting with circles. Pop M80, which is so explosive and annoying. If that wasn't good enough, they started with another louder boom. Yeah, those it's crazy how loud some of the fireworks are. Sour Patch Kids candy from Easter, bright and colorful. 
I know how to turn them into journals now. Oh, thank you. I love that. Awesome. So glad that uh, the Mythical Makeover was fun for you. That was a really fun journal style to make. Um, I'm liking what you're doing to distraction. Yeah, definitely the energy of distraction. Okay, so I am going to take a super quick break. I put my little sign there and I will be right back. All right, I am back. I'm going to zoom in on this little guy. And I am going to sharpen my Stabilo Marks All pencil there. So for this one, I just want to play with paint, right? Like the last one had a destination and a place I was going. But I love just putting paint on the, the page and working in this sort of circular energy just always feels very energizing to me. So I'm going to keep with my same palette here. Get some more of this blue. And going to get some... These are not all the brushes that I wanted, but you know, we're going to go with what we have in front of us today. Those are too big to go in there. There we go. There's some different ones. So I've got a variety of size of brushes. Another way to create difference in our surfaces. 
is to make sure we're changing up our brush strokes. So let's get some of this Nova Magenta going. So pretty, I love this color. All right. So I think I might even come in with a little bit of this black and what I'm feeling is just kind of this sort of painting energy of maybe spirals crossing over each other almost as if they're fireworks in action and that little bit of stabilo is going to end up mixing with my paint which is fine and those of you that follow me know this is one of my favorite styles of painting is just lots of layers of marks and paint to just create interesting abstract playful backgrounds and this is one that feels like it's going to be fun to paint but then might become something else at some point and we'll see but for right now I just want to give myself permission to play and to put paint down on the canvas. Looks like this is another one that needs some gesso on the sides. I'm going to do that real quick. So this is painting number two of four. If you're just joining us, popping in at any time, whether you're watching the replay or joining live, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Manette. This is painting in your PJs live with Manette. I'm painting for four hours and my attempt is going to be to do four paintings in four hours. So at least one of them needs to be pretty simple. So this one is going to be the simplest of all, maybe. And it may be one that I want to like work on and then set aside and move on to the the next one too so there's time for those layers to really dry in between and I'm gonna get some just white acrylic going here and a different brush so I love spirals almost as much as I love circles. So my love of mandalas and circle designs spread to my son, Connor, who's an artist in his own right. He makes beautiful jewelry. And since he was in high school, he started designing these gorgeous mandala designs. We call them sacred circles because they're not intended to be religious in nature. And mandala is a Sanskrit word that means circles. And they're often used in Tibetan, Buddhist, and Hindu traditions. And already this is making me happy. Happy, happy, happy. And... Um, I used to use them in my business coaching as a way to just help people relax because business is so overwhelming, especially for creatives. And we just have kept up the, the practice across time. And eventually we created some coloring books. And now we have a wonderful membership program. Carol's in that program and Kay is in that program. And we just renamed it. It's called the Sacred Circles Community. And it is all about creating, you know, beautiful sacred circle designs, but also about a sacred circle of people coming together to connect and create. There's a link in the description for this live stream to our Sacred Circles membership and it's one of my favorite things that I get to do every single month is to gather live with people. Thank you, Tori. Thank you, thank you. The coloring books are all Connor for sure, and he did a, a great job with them. In fact, we're, I think we're going to get ready to, to get them up on Amazon. We don't have as much control over the quality of the paper. 
We have some fun ideas, but I love our membership. I've added a, a Zen Tingle lesson to that membership every month where we're using Zen Tingle patterns to complete one of Connor's designs. And I will bring a bunch of designs that I have colored over the last few months and share them with you guys in a little while. I meant to grab them. And so not only Oh, I love that Blanca that you came across something um, that you created during a studio Zoom. Which which studio session was it? And you thought, who did this? I love it. And then you did it. How amazing. Nancy, I love that you love circles and spirals as well. Yeah, they show up in, in so much of my work. And it's what's fascinating. Yes, Margaret, you're here too. I love that you're in that group as well. Thank you, thank you. And um, what I love about the mandala work, or as we call them, the sacred circle work, is that they are calming, they help us focus, they help us connect to our creativity. And I used to think it was just me you know, saying these things, right? Like what I knew to be true about my own personal mandala practice, which I've had now for 15 years. And then I started doing research. Awesome, Nancy. I love that. Thank you. Um, and I have a coupon too for where you can try it for $7 for the first month. So when I get to a stopping place, I'll go grab that coupon and drop it here in the in the chat as well. Um, and I thought it was just me who was feeling the, the mindful benefits of working with these mandalas. And then all of the sudden, um, what I discovered was there's a whole body of research that's been done by psychologists, by the Association of Art Therapy, and they have done studies that prove that coloring mandalas is more relaxing than any other kind of coloring. And it's especially more relaxing than just approaching a blank page or a blank canvas that there's something that our brain really, really loves about the symmetry of sacred circle designs, about the symmetry of the coloring pages. All of a sudden, these are looking like two little eyes there. That's sort of interesting, a funny little face. Hmm, almost like a little sort of maybe elephant face, or maybe we turn it this way and then it's not a face anymore. So um, it's important always to turn your art around. But then, as uh, a lot of you know, I recently read a book, and many of you have read it too, called Your Brain on Art. And they also talk about mandala design. And Carl Jung was actually the one that really popularized the, the concept of the mandala in the, the Western world. And he drew a mandala every day. And he used it as a way of centering and grounding and also a way of just accessing his unconscious. And if any of you are familiar with his work called The Red Book, it's worth looking up online. It's a, a publication. It's a the actual physical book is huge, but I got to see a, a display one time in Santa Barbara, and um, that I really loved of his original work from that book. And his mandalas are exquisite. So they're often used in different ways. Yeah, I, I do kind of see an elephant there, but he's kind of kind of on the on the triangle. Interesting. Yeah, something going on there. We're just going to let it happen. So this is one of those fun paintings where I don't need to do anything else to it. I can just really sit and enjoy the the process of painting. It doesn't need to be anything other than energy. 
but I don't want to have it kind of look like that sort of, you know, elephant feel there. So I think what I want to do is to, what do I want to do? Maybe bring another bigger circle in here and sort of just break up that pattern there. I see animals in everything, but that wasn't where I was going. And I love, love, love all the layers of painting that came underneath this. And this one kind of feels, has that firework feel of, I like fireworks from a distance when I can see them and not hear them because they really are quite, quite beautiful. And this one feels like those layers of life, right? You know, when we start to really think about ourselves and our lives where it was the nature floral and I love the the zentangle oh zinger z-i-n-g-e-r-s is that what you mean Blanca the zingers I love the zingers too but all the many layers of ourselves it's what I love about mixed media art is the building up layers of texture and meaning it's very much a metaphor for our own lives. And it's amazing just adding these little marks of paint, how it changes things up. There's a lot going on here, so now it feels like it wants to. The library or inter library loan to borrow a physical copy of the Red Book, Marion. Is that the is that what you mean? Yeah, it's um it's pretty pretty special, pretty special book for sure. Great idea. All right, so this needs some of that really bring the darks back to get that shape back in here of that spiral. In the earliest forms of art on key paintings, the spiral was one of those symbols that showed up over and over again since the dawn of time in every culture. The Celts have their gorgeous Triskelion or triple spiral. Native Americans, African indigenous tribes, right? Like the, the spiral shows up everywhere. So it's starting to feel now like everything's kind of swimming together, which feels a little bit better. It doesn't feel quite so chaotic, but it also feels very wet. So, and I want this one to get really, really dry so that I can bring back some of those brighter colors. Um, zingers make more sense than fingers. Yes, they do. One of my favorite Zentangle patterns. Oh, and look at those happy, happy painted, painty fingers. Okay, so I'm going to set that one aside. And I'm going to come over to this one. This one's getting nice and dry. It'll be ready soon for a little bit of touch up and some additions. That was the first painting that I did. And so I think this one is going to, this nice big one, I want to be a sacred circle design. And I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and use my tool here and get some circles down. I'm going to kind of ignore the background. I'm going to get that a little bit centered on the, the page here. I'm, I'm not worried about much of anything that's happening in the background, but I just want to have a place for starting to add design and pattern to this. That is not going to fit through there. Let's see if this will
at least go through the paint. This is the other thing I love about this tool is that, and I wish they had one that was like one size bigger as well. So this is just a, you know, a ball tip point pen. So it's just sort of carving all the way through the paint to the, to the layers behind. And where did my cardboard thing go that I had? There it is. Let's see, is that any? Nope, that's not really any bigger. So, okay, so we're gonna stop there. And I'm thinking what feels good is some, get some white paint on here and paint out some of these circles. I really love the, I love the center there, but I want to maybe start to mark out some of the spaces a little bit differently. Still want to see some of the color and texture showing through. I don't really know where I'm going with this one. I'm just going to start painting and see where it takes me. And this is why I love having multiple paintings on the go because it allows me to keep enjoying that painting fun, but to take a pause and let something get really dry on its own before I feel the need to come back and add more paint to it, but I don't have to stop painting either. Get that little thin stripe there going. You can tell when I'm focusing, I get quiet. And this might end up needing a little bit of that sort of redactive painting style, right? Where some of this is showing. And I'm thinking I want that inner circle to be yellow. Let that white dry a little bit, then I can put that yellow over the top and it'll show up a little brighter and maybe some yellow out here around the edges as well. So right now it's looking more like a target or a bullseye than a sacred circle design. I love painting sacred circles. I love tangling them. Hi, Elena. Good morning. Good morning. Yep, Helix Angle and Circle Maker. It's one of my absolutely favorite tools and great to have you here, my friend. Is it foggy where you are? Blanca's down in the San Fernando Valley and said it was gray where she is. Have you guys got some morning fog over there? So if you're just joining, welcome, welcome. I am on painting number three of four this morning. None of them, the, the first two aren't finished yet, but I will go back and forth between paintings um, to get them to a stage of feeling more finished. And I'm playing with the theme of circles, sacred circles today. Elena was one of the, the people that knows that I have been doing this for so long. And every time I would make a workbook for my business coaching clients, it would always have sacred circle designs to color in it. Gray and misty. Gray and misty. That's kind of what it is here too today. Gray and misty and chance of thunderstorms this afternoon, which does not bode well for the fireworks celebrations. All right, so this is starting to get that sense of roundness. 
Let me zoom out just a little bit. There we go. And my fingers were pretty dry, so hopefully I'm not getting paint on the camera. And as always, if you're joining us, I love knowing what you're working on. The intention is not necessarily that you're painting what I'm painting, but that we're painting in community. You're bringing along the those unfinished projects you'd love to get finished. Or starting a new project. I'm thinking my afternoon because I will be done live at noon, but uh, I have a day ahead to play and create. And so I'm thinking a stitching project feels really fun today. So I might do some stitching. Yeah, remote would uh, would be great for the um, camera, but I don't know that, that we had to put it on the manual zoom, so it's not constantly trying to focus itself. Awesome! So Shelly is deciding what journal to use for Midlife Renaissance. Midlife Renaissance is my brand new program that I am so stinking excited about and starts officially, well, I guess it started yesterday when I sent the, the first email out with um, the first lessons in it, but super excited to spend time working with other creatives like me who are like we're past the midlife crisis, but we're still a little bit in that that middle soup of trying to figure out who we are and what's next for us in our lives. Okay, so this one is feeling really fun. I love that I can see all the scritchy, scratchy marks. And Shelly, I thought long and hard about what journal to use as well, and do I make one, and um, all that kind of stuff. But I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, the Hanamula sketch diary. It's absolutely one of my favorites. I'm going to need to go get some... Oh no, I have more painty water. It's going to say my water's getting pretty gunky here. So if all of a sudden you start to notice that your colors are looking kind of muddy, you might just check your water and make sure that you're keeping your water nice and fresh. And that can help. It's especially true with watercolors, but it's true with our... acrylics as well. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to paint some patterns on here or if I'm going to get my Posca's out and have some fun doing some drawn line work and patterns. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. Welcome, welcome. Great to have you here. So fun having new people along today. And it's just way more fun to paint in community. I mean, I absolutely love lots of long, quiet time in my studio, but there's something about the, the energy of knowing that we're all creating together that definitely jazzes me up. Trying to get that circle just a little more round. Feeling like that one needs a little bit of calming down there. Aw, thanks Tori. I appreciate that. And let's see. Get a little purple going in here. Mm, that's kind of pretty. Doesn't need to go everywhere, but maybe just interesting. 
I had fun on Sunday afternoon. My daughter and I and her roommate got together. She's at University in Oregon on FaceTime and painted together for a couple of hours, which was lovely to get some of that time with her. Okay, this is looking kind of groovy. And I'm wanting to maybe just, like I'm loving this inner circle here. And these just a little bit of shadow in there to maybe look like it's kind of receding. Baby wipes are one of my absolutely favorite tools in the studio. I think they're probably one of my can't live without tools. So it's interesting because now these are really bright and the outside is kind of dark. And when I think about, am I going to go with black for drawing or white for drawing? I don't want to mix them. I want some of both. So I'm thinking I want to maybe brighten that purple up. It wasn't quite what I wanted, but we don't know until we try. Yeah, so true, um, Margaret, a sketchbook paper spiral and used watercolor on it. So you can definitely, um, when you have the thinner paper, and that can be true for the Hanamula too, it can get a little wavy. It's not like super, super strong paper. Again, I love the sketch diary because it has the lines on one side and the blank page on the other side, but I usually will gesso the pages and it's kind of cool to use watercolor over gesso. You actually get some really interesting uh, effects that way. Get some fresh water. All my water <laughs> jars have lids on them because if I don't put lids on them, then the cats like painty water. I don't know why they like painty water, but they definitely do. But yeah, so gesso or if you definitely want to use watercolor, you can also, Daniel Smith makes something called watercolor grounds. And um, you can paint that on pages or any surface, like even on this wood and turn it into a watercolor surface. It's kind of cool to, to play with, but it does take 24 hours to dry. And I'm not always that patient or remember, but I usually in my Hanamula journal will gesso my pages if I know I'm gonna be using any wet media on them. Okay, that feels a little bit better than that purple. I think I want one more circle out here. Mostly I'm just having fun painting circles, apparently. Doesn't seem to be necessarily going anywhere else, but the idea, like this could be a sacred circle, right? The designs don't have to be complicated, although I have a tendency to really love the more complicated designs but this feels like a fun, fun start. Okay, so I'm gonna get my Posca's out and I'm gonna draw all over this one and create a sacred circle design. And in order to do that, this needs to be so, so dry. Otherwise it will ruin the tips of my Posca's. So I'm gonna set this one aside to dry. And I have been super inspired by all of the sunflowers blooming. Let's see, everywhere. So I've been taking lots of pictures of sunflowers and they are also a circle, not a perfect circle, but they are definitely a circle. So I thought I would have some fun with a sunflower painting on one of these. Um, Elena, I just, I love the Liquitex. It's medium priced. I've used the Michaels, the Artist Loft brand. It's not uh, opaque enough. 
and I didn't love the like golden one, um, but I love just the Liquitex Basics acrylic gesso. I like all of their mediums actually. They're affordable and um, easy, usually easy to get. So I think I want to paint like a big kind of up close sunflower and I love, look at all the light in the center of that one and the texture, <coughs> pretty amazing. And again, we're sticking with our theme of circles. I'm going to take a sip of water here. How's everybody doing? You guys having fun painting along? It's hard to believe we're almost halfway through already. And I'm painting faster than I thought. So, you know, who knows? Maybe we're going to end up doing more than four paintings. All right, so let's come in with that Stabilo and my handy dandy circle drawer. And I want just one big sunflower, kind of just more or less right in the center. So I'm just kind of eyeballing the center. So this is the one painting that may all of this stuff in the background may completely disappear. It doesn't need to be perfectly in the center and I'm looking, I don't even know if my board is perfectly square. So Elena, today I'm painting on scrap wood that, um, that uh, Rebecca gave me from her workshop leftover from making Zendo houses. So it feels awesome to have the, the spirit of Rebecca here. You like the golden gesso. Awesome, Shelly. Great. Good to hear that. Great. I'm glad you're having fun. And you've gotten so much stitching completed. And it's lovely. Like, you know, the that old idea of... Um, quilting circles and stitching circles like we just don't have those anymore right we don't have those anymore so I'm wondering if we can get a nice brown using our same palette that we've been using I don't know if I'm gonna get it dark enough and maybe it doesn't even matter. So it's always fun to mix all the colors on your palette together. My friend Andrea calls this the the mother color where you take and mix all of your colors together and it creates symmetry in your piece and makes it all kind of go together. Still waking up, I don't usually get up this early. Ha! Ah, Shelly, where do you live? Are you, remind me, I think, are you in the in the Midwest somewhere? You must um, be a night owl. I'm such a, an early bird person, so thank you for coming today. Yes, always about the, the repurposing, absolutely. So this is a pretty color that maybe feels like a little bit closer to the, to the center of that sunflower. Still a little red. But we can get that first layer down and I can always brown that up a little bit more later. There's something on my gunky on my brush there. And I could get lost in just sitting here color mixing as well. But that's kind of a, a pretty pretty color, right? So that just sort of it's a little bit brown, but it's a good base color because the center of a sunflower has a lot of texture and light. So we're gonna, I'm gonna wanna add and build up that texture. Sticking my finger in the paint. And we're definitely gonna want some brighter yellows. So when you're painting a light transparent color like this bright yellow in Minnesota. Awesome. 
So you're an hour later than I am, I think, right? It's 1046 your time, or are you on East Coast time? So when you want to paint a bright color like this over a painty or a darker background, it can be hard to cover it up. Wow, 4 a.m. is your favorite time to go to bed. I'm often awake at 4 a.m. in the morning. So it takes all of us to make the world go around. I love that. Love that. And I've never been a night owl, even in like my, you know, fun college days. So in order to get that really beautiful bright pop of yellow that I'm seeking for the sunflower, I'm going to use my white paint and I'm going to get my, my petals down with the white paint first. And I'm going to need some more white paint. This one's almost empty. So I had a big tub of Nova fluid white paint, which I love, but I did not like the container. Your morning yoga practice. I love that. Awesome. Okay, so before I forget, I'm going to go over here and find that coupon for Nancy or for anyone else that might be interested in checking out our Sacred Circles membership for, you can check out the, the first month for seven bucks um, off, I think is what the coupon is. Let me go find it. Dun, da, da, da. Coupons. Make sure it's still a valid coupon. Awesome. And I'm going to cut and paste this right into the chat for anyone that might want to give our Sacred Circles community a try. You can save $7 off the first month. Sacred Circles 7, all caps. Um, and I'll pop the link in there as well. It's also in the description of the video. Trying not to get so much paint everywhere. And there's that direct link to the page as well. Maybe. Are you going to show up for me? Hello. There it goes. Oh, now it went twice. Okay, so there's the link to our Sacred Circles membership. So what I love about the Sacred Circles membership, and this is going to be a very abstract sunflower, is it's all about learning to use our creative practice for relaxation, for focus, for calm, for just mindful presence. Our minds tend to be very, very busy and we have to create better ways to manage our stress of just, you know, being in the, the world today. It's been pretty crazy, intense few years. And I know personally my Sacred Circles practice is one of the things that has gotten me through. So we call them Sacred Circles because they are graphic in nature, not religious in nature, but the intention is the, the same as a mandala design. And next time I get up, I'll grab some. Uh, Connor's designs are so beautiful. And they're fun to color. We have three live calls a month. We give you six six to eight designs because Connor usually de designs live during our live calls as well that you can print when you sign up for the full year we'll also send you a binder full of printed designs on really nice Bristol cardstock for painting coloring tangling all right is definitely a silly abstract 
sunflower but I kind of like it I kind of like the the background as well but it definitely feels um, like there needs to be a little more going on in the the background of this sunflower and this is another good example of like painting you're welcome Nancy uh, multiple paintings at the same time right is you know uh, I may not like all of them so they something may just end up getting completely painted over and um, but I don't know until I try until I just kind of until I kind of go for it I always want to make the sunflower petals kind of pointy but they're actually not they're kind of flat on the top let's see oh these are actually really pointy okay and they're also beautifully layered and I've been watching all the you know the sunflowers blooming and some of them are layered and some of them are not so you know I have lots of options for do I want to have more petals that are kind of layered and tucked behind and right now I'm working on letting go of my inner critic that's like oh that doesn't really look like a sunflower and what do you think you're doing I know nobody else has that voice that just pops up in their head randomly and criticizes what it is that you're up to, right? I'm definitely the only one that has a loud inner critic. And even given how much I paint and I love to paint, I definitely still have that voice that shows up time and time again. So I'm going to paint my petals first and the center last because we want that center to really pop out right because they are concave right they have a lot of roundness and texture but I'm also seeing I want a little bit more of this color kind of peeking through in the background so while that white dries a little bit I'm going to come back to some of the edges. I don't care if it goes over the, the white, but I want to get, I think that magenta will make a gorgeous contrast to the yellow of the sunflower. And I think I'm going to come back around the edges and do the edges of this. I love some of the marks of texture that I can still see behind there as well. All right, so I'm going to take my makeup sponge and we're going to make the edge of this all that magenta color as well. I'm not too worried about what's happening on the backs. Nobody's going to see the back right if I wanted them to be super finished I could paint them or even collage some paper onto the back but it's going to hang flat on the wall so mostly I just want to make sure that I have those edges nice and neat so if somebody walked up to it from the edge right they would see that nice band of color there Huh. anti intercritic I love that yes and I think it's um, always brilliant to personify our inner critic give it a name right um, you start another painting to try and prove her wrong I love that technique that is a great technique okay so I'm not liking this petal over here so I think that one needs to go and where did I put the baby wipes? There they are. Not all baby wipes are created equal either. So these were like a, a cheap, I think, Safeway brand. And 
I usually try to get the unscented ones, but these are, one, they're scented, and two, they're not quite wet enough, so I love Pampers BB Wipes. So it's kind of fun. It's just kind of pushing some of that color back to some of the texture actually in the background. All right, that feels better. I'm going to decide about this one. Yes, I will absolutely go back to those beginning um, paints and marks. Do you remember, do you mean, Margaret, like building up from the white with all of the marks? Or do you mean like adding the, the final marks on these more finished pieces? So this was the first painting that I did with the silhouettes. And then the other one is still in process. Awesome. Providence has arrived. All right, let's get rid of that one too. Okay, that shape feels a little bit better. Yeah, too many petals. I don't want it to have that many petals. I think maybe because I just kind of love the magenta and I love that I can see some of the the texture and the the marks in the background as well all right that feels a little bit better and it feels like a little wonky sunflower which most of the sunflowers are they're not perfectly round right they're not perfectly round okay beautiful all right i'm gonna get some yellow down here. So this is one of my favorite um, Azo Yellow Deep from Amsterdam. I love that yellow. Let's. We've also got just some plain Liquitex Primary Yellow, maybe. And the sunflowers here are so beautiful right now. Hmm, and some gold might be good. I was looking for some yellow ochre for a little warmer yellow. More gold. All right, it might have all gotten used up. Okay, well, we're going to go what we have, some more of that Naples yellow, and I can always darken it up a little bit if I need. So I have a variety of different yellows here, and we're just going to play with the yellows to get some texture. I'm going to see what happens, because now all my water... Hi, Nikki! Happy Independence Day! All right, so I'm still sort of amazed that I have four paintings in progress. They're all coming along. I'm feeling pretty good about actually being able to maybe finish those in all four of them in four hours. But you notice I picked a couple that were definitely more complex. And then I picked a couple that were much simpler. I'm going to start to just build a little bit of texture up in the center as we go and start layering in those. Well, you silly thing, why were you all out of focus there? Oh, I see when I move my brush over here, it's trying to focus differently. Knocking everything off the table. All right, so there's first layers. Ah, I see when I'm rinsing in my water, it's let's move the water closer and see if that helps it from going in and out of focus. Like I said, all new technology, all new camera today. And let's get some of this super bright yellow in here. I always think of sunflowers as actually kind of a 
an orangey yellow, which is why I love that Azo yellow. Feels more sunflowery. And I'm gonna let this stay pretty messy because I will come in with my Posca markers and I'm feeling some like dramatic black lines around the edges of this to clean it up and give it some texture. It's one of my favorite styles of painting. Kind of almost folk arty is coming in with those lines around the edges of things. Making sure we get all up around the, the edges here. The other thing about the sunflower petals, when you look at them up close, they are so like silky smooth. Silky, silky smooth. And remember if you haven't taken a break and you've been here for a while to don't forget to stand up and stretch and move around. So this is a pretty bright, happy sunflower. I love the Nova Color paints. Um, a few years ago, I was at a Zen Tingle event called Tingle U in Asheville, North Carolina. I was there again this year, but um, Andrea and another woman and I were looking around at galleries and we went into this one woman's or in these artist studios and she was using the paints and um, I'm like okay those look fun I love the the they're similar to a golden fluid acrylic um, but they're lovely opaque and they're very affordable you know Andrea her complaint was that you had to pay a fortune for the the shipping on them. So one time when she came to visit me when I was still in, in Santa Barbara, we actually went to the factory in LA and, and stocked up. So I haven't bought any in a while, but I know she just bought a new set of them. All right, so this is a very happy sunflower. It's definitely making me happy, happy. Got way too much yellow paint here. All right, so it's time for this one to go sit for a second. But if I didn't answer the question, I love the Nova paints. I love the consistency. I've noticed here in Colorado, they dry out a little bit faster than I'd like them to. So that's, you know, one complaint that I have. If I don't use them up fast enough, they do kind of dry out. Let's see, where are we? with this one. I'm kind of thinking, I got this yellow. It may be what some of these are calling for is just a little brightening up of colors. So funny, this primary yellow in the camera light looks um, almost neon. Yeah, just brighten that up a little bit. And this is what I tend to do when I have a lot of paint on my palette is that I will just put it on different pieces of art. So this one feels fun and playful, but it's uh, very dark, right? So now it's time to really brighten those colors up there, maybe come back in with some pure white. But this yellow will go a long way. And these kind of paintings for me are often very much about moving energy, being with my emotions, connecting to how I'm feeling. And this particular style always really connects me back to joy. There's something very joyful and magical for me about painting in that circular shape. And so it's important to notice 
you know, as you're painting, what are the marks and movements that your hand likes to make? Like what are, you know, what are you leaning into and towards to sort of, you know, try to really start to create your own signature style of marks. And I have one giant painting I did with this very happy dancing figure in the center that the whole giant canvas is like, I don't know, 24 or 36 by 36 is just these giant painted circles. And to me, there's just something about the movement more than the final expression that makes me feel good to paint. And for me, the reason that I paint is not to make pretty things, although when that happens, it's always fun. But it's really the, the practice and the process of connecting to myself energetically. How am I feeling? Being able to label emotions, to notice where I am, right? How am I feeling? What wants to be expressed? And a lot of times that expression comes in color and movement and shape, not in words, right? So we don't give ourselves enough grace, you know, or people say, well, how are you feeling? And you're like, I don't really know. And because we don't always have words to express how we're feeling. And so we can always turn to art as a form of that deeper connection to our own inner knowing. And at this point, I have a, a lot of videos on this channel that are about that process, about especially about using intuitive collage for connecting to ourselves and that inner knowing. See that wood, the edges of the wood are so thirsty. Nikki, do you guys have fun family plans with the boys for the 4th of July today? Is anybody else going out to watch fireworks later? Do we have some, like I do miss 4th of July picnics and barbecues growing up in Texas. It was often, you know, a lot of family picnic and barbecue was super fun. All right, this one's feeling happy, happy, happy. But I'm feeling like it needs another pop of color, and I don't know why. Bike riding and swimming. Yeah, you like the Nova paints, the flow and riches, the saturation. So they do a great job on the tubes telling you what that, um, let's see if it'll focus. Am I going to focus? There it goes telling you whether it's opaque or not and some of their their cadmium yellows which you know aren't always the healthiest but they are pretty opaque so they do have a really nice yellow i do like the opacity of their yellow um here's some fluorescent red let's try it yep keeping your dog in the basement because of the noise all right so here's an example of one that definitely got uh, dried out. So we'll see what we can. Oh, that's a crazy, crazy color. OK, but that's what it feels like it needs is that fun pop of color. Leslie, something I was working on, you said it needed the uh, fluorescent pink. Well, here's some fluorescent red. I do love fluorescence. My friend Sherry, who's an amazing painter, she loves mixing with fluorescence. And it's really fun to add um, a different element of brightness to your to your pieces. So this one just feels like my happy, messy, kind of in-between painting. So kind of fun watching it grow. And right now my sense is that it's going to get painted over and have something completely different happen to it but I don't know what that is yet so it could be finished for now but I'm kind of feeling like it's going to get a, a layer of paint all over the the whole thing I don't know what color that's going to be yet and right now I have a brush full of this fluorescent orange and I'm wondering 
what would happen if we just bring some few little pops and get that actually up on the screen of some light and brightness into some of these circles. It's amazing what one tiny little bit of color can do. So I definitely love their quinacridone magenta in the Nova paints, but the, the one thing that I love, um, grand baby duty, that's a fun duty to be on with your sweet grandbaby, um, is their gold is one of the most opaque gold. So I really, really love their gold paint. They have a great gold. Okay, so that was interesting to add some little pops of color. And now I'm thinking, well, maybe it needs a little more festive fun. So I'm just using the end of my brush dipped in that fluorescent because I put it in one place, right? I need to put it in more places than one around the, the canvas, even if I even, you know, end up pushing that back a little bit. Hmm, nope. So maybe we're just going to let that color play there. So what I love about acrylics is how forgivable they are and everything truly is paint overable, right? We have just a lot of sort of painting freedom with acrylics to layer and layer and layer things. All right, so I am going to dig out my Posca here. Yeah, this is definitely going to get painted over. I don't know what's going to happen to it. I don't want to lose all that fun texture, but I'm thinking there's something else that's coming. And I just want to sort of stay in curiosity about that. And I'm getting to a place where like everything on the table needs the opportunity to dry a little bit. So Posca markers like changed my painting life in so many ways. I also really love, of course, I learned about these from my friend uh, Andrea Shebelu from A Work of Heart Studio. These solid markers are great from adding some little, little pops of color as well. They go on creamy like a gelato, but they dry permanent. And it just feels like, so I want to come back and just sort of integrate that fluorescent color. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's gorgeous. I haven't used a lot of it, but I want that to sort of be integrated in the piece and not feel quite so much like it's just overlaid over the, the top of the whole thing. So I do love these solid markers are great for these top layers. And then there's nothing like just some little white dots. or little marks to come in and really help brighten a piece up and give it sort of that little bit more finished look. It's also always getting my own hand in there. So I use my white ones so much that That makes really fun dots. They weren't quite as tiny as I was thinking. And I know I'm sure I have another smaller white in there, but I kind of like the, those bigger dots. And I want to just kind of break up these stripes down here. They feel a little stark as well. And again, just adding a few little marks over the top of that red just to kind of help it feel like it's a little more 
integrated and not just like layered in the top. I could also come in and outline some of these circles. It doesn't need a lot, like it's feeling pretty good and pre pretty complete. Oh, those, these are not um, Posca's, these, these, these solid markers, let's see if it'll, um, these are by Sakura and they were actually made for, silly thing, come on, there we go. They're made by Sakura, they're not a paint marker, they're, uh, a solid like oil base marker that dries permanent even though it goes on really creamy so these are not Posca's these are by Sakura and then these are just my traditional Posca's. Posca only makes one thing really they make their markers and I'm kind of excited I haven't let myself go buy them yet because I have so many of them right now but they have some new color sets out some new more earthy um, earthy colors. I think that was that one. And I'm going to come back in this one may be too fine. One thing about using the the Posca on the wood is that if it's rough and there's a lot of texture you got to be gentle with your tips also if you're using Posca's over paint of any kind remember to let's see if I have a thicker black in here um, also remember that it's really essential to make sure that your paint is completely completely dry okay that one's too thick but look at this nice bad boy he's really fun is this a bullet tip one no this one makes like really cool marks and lines so on Amazon at one point I found a set that was just black and white and um, it was really pretty magical so I use these so much I go through them pretty fast also living um, where it's very dry and at altitude right I'm just kind of mindful of the how long things last, how they react differently, being up here in a different different environment. So I just want those circles to be to stand out a little bit more, be a little bit more dramatic, a little bit neater. So I'm just coming around and darkening up those lines to create some of that contrast and drama so it makes sure those circles are really separated from the background. I probably called them uh, from Posca's Elena. It was probably totally me mixing up all of my words. Okay and my close my paints, make some room And when we start painting, right, with and using the circles, our circles tend to spread. Um, and so sometimes we just need to go back and neaten up those circles a little bit. Plus, like I said, I, I love that sort of folk arty drama of the really black lines, but just adding that black really sort of makes things stand out, makes those circles stand out from the, the backgrounds. And I am going to sign that one. And I usually add the year as well so I can sort of pay attention to, you know, where my painting is at a given time. I just want to brighten up things in a few more spots. Okay, I'm going to call this one done. So painting 
number one of number four is complete in the moment, right? So pretty happy with this one. Again, I love that redactive style of painting where you create the crazy background and then soften it and paint things out. And let's see, how is our base for our sacred circle design? It's feeling pretty good. All right. So I'm just going to go for it and we're going to see what is going to happen with this one. So I tend to have a few, let me actually put all this paint away since I'm going to work with my Posca's here for a minute. So I actually have, you know, sort of a series of patterns when I'm making my own sacred circle designs that I kind of turn to over and over again. Um, I'm always super inspired by the artist Robin Mead and her messy mandalas. Messy mandalas are, are super, super fun to make. And so sometimes I have to stretch a little bit to try to get, you know, some, some different patterns and ideas. But I'm going to start super simple with just some petal shapes. And I may come back in with other colors of Posca markers. We got a few little wet spots still in there. I even love a lot of times the Poscas, especially these finer tip ones, you know, when you go across a surface, then you will, um, let's see, um, sometimes it sprays a little bit, but I love the way that looks. And so if you're just joining us or popping in to see what we're up to, we are enjoying some painting freedom with a four hour long mini paint-a-thon. And I'm painting four paintings in four hours. Maybe, we'll see. That's my goal. And we're focused on the shape of the circle in our designs. Historically, the circle shape is one of the oldest known symbols. It appears across cultures and religions. And I can only think that our love of the circle was inspired by are, you know, both love of and need for the sun, the roundness of the sun, and the roundness of the moon. Happy full moon, so the, the July full moon was on the rise last night, at least here in the northern hemisphere. It's called the Buck Moon or the Capricorn Moon, and I'm a Capricorn, so I was little curious about this particular moon. I love the the painty center here so I'm really not wanting to maybe add anything to that that painty center. And the concept of the mandala has also been prevalent in many cultural traditions in Sanskrit, it means circle. And what I love about working with circles is that whether it's circles of people, circles of art, our sacred circle designs from our sacred circle membership, is that a circle always represents all of the individual parts as well as the whole. Oh, thank you, Margaret represents all of the individual parts as well as the whole. And both neuroscience 
and art therapy have shown that working with the shape of the mandala or the circle is the most relaxing shape to color and to draw. I think our brains really love the symmetry of circles, the completeness and the wholeness of them. They make sense in our minds and they help our very busy minds to calm down, to relax, to focus. So again, I have no sort of destination in mind here. I'm just really enjoying the process of just putting pen to wood in this case and seeing where the design is going to take me. It's almost time for a break and another cup of coffee. All right. It's going to be interesting to see what it looks like when the whole thing is drawn with patterns and I still can see some of the the yummy underpainting so it's amazing right already in two and a half hours the all the the color palettes i started with were the same um and just being inspired by those initial marks and designs how different the four paintings are going to be from each other and i am definitely not one of those artists that has a signature style that all my art looks the same. I love too many different things, right? I have so much fun and <laughs> coffee, yes please, especially for you. It's still only 9.30 there. I love variety. I love lots of different mediums and approaches. And because art for me really is more about that process of self-discovery. Move this paper over a little bit. Then it is about being well known for my art itself. I much more prefer the philosophy and the teaching and the therapeutic side of it. Things don't always look the same and I'm okay with that, right? So I'm not someone who feels like I need to find my perfect signature style. Okay, that big marker is awesome for making stripes. Hmm, I'm wondering if I want to use it here too, but if I do that, then I'm going to drag my hand through it. So let's set that guy aside. So this one, I'm definitely going to come back with white and maybe some more you know, pops of color to finish this out. All right, Blanca, if you're brewing coffee, brew me one too, please. And since we're on this theme of circles and spirals, let's bring some spirals into our design. And I can see, you know, sometimes that Posca is uh, going through the layers to some of that color beneath, which is super groovy. Somebody laughed at me the other day for saying groovy, but it's just always been one of my favorite words. And I think this one is crying out for some of that fun fluorescent red there. And you know, if you see something that I am painting today and you absolutely love it and say, hey, that needs to come and hang in my house with me, let me know. Everything's always for sale. It's fun to sell art. It's never my focus and intention, but I am happy to send these home with people.
And if they stay here long enough, they either tell me that they have their final painting on them or sometimes they just get completely painted over and turned into something else differently. Thank you, Elena. I would say that's true for you too. You have a lot of different passions and loves when it comes to your art making. Like my signature style is the process. It's a great way to put it. All right, I gotta have some orbs in here because orbs. I'm definitely looking forward to a lazy afternoon sitting on the couch, maybe watching some movies and doing some slow stitching. Hey Elizabeth, happy July 4th to you my friend, great to see you here. I'm like, I'm getting all these Slack notices and text, I'm like, oh. So I asked my son to design a logo for my new program. Let's see if it'll focus in on that. And I'm loving where he is going with it. What do you guys think? So I told him that I wanted the logo to be a compass rose because your midlife renaissance is all about finding direction in your life. It's so funny. He sent me the link and he's playing with it as we're watching. So we're watching my son Connor design um, right here live. That's kind of cool. Super fun. All right. So this one is definitely going to need some white. I know it was really pretty. I can't wait to see where he goes with it next. Yeah, super cool watching it, watching it happen. I'll have to text him later and say, hey, we were watching you work on the design while we were going. Okay, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. So I think I'm going to come back with that big, giant black one again, or actually,
Okay. All right. Apparently when I moved, I accidentally put it on mute. I know. <laughs> well, it's because it's in my, in my lap. All right. Uh, would you possibly make me a cup of coffee, please? Awesome. Thank you. All right. Can you hear me now? I can't see you guys, but maybe give me a, a thumbs up or something. Uh, let me know that you can hear me, that I am back on. It looks looks like I am back on. Yay. Okay. Awesome. All right. So good lesson. So thank you for letting me know you couldn't hear me. So this has a little button here, and apparently I must, must have pressed it when I leaned over. So all right. Lessons learned. All right, glad I'm back. Thank you guys. And thank you guys for sticking with me. Put yourself on mute. I love it. I'm glad I'm not the only one, Nancy. So I'm feeling like I want to put a row of some fun flowers since we have our circle and our flower theme going. So one of my favorite Zentangle patterns is called Sioux Flower. So this will be a little bit, or maybe, actually no, I think I want some Henna Drum, another one of my favorite Zentangle patterns. And that's what else I love about the Posca while it's wet. Um, we can wipe that away, but then we probably need to Wait for it to dry. All right. So I'm going to do some half circles all the way around the edges here. If you're not familiar with Zentangle, Zentangle is a meditative form of drawing or a mindful form of drawing. Initially, it was designed very simply on a three and a half inch square tile. And it's drawing repetitive patterns in black and white. It's been amazing to watch the, the company grow and flourish over the years. I've been a certified Zentangle teacher since 2014 and I've been tangling since 2010 and I am definitely one of those artists who loves all of the things but Zentangle is one of the things over the years that has stuck and I have Zentangle patterns show up in a lot of my work even in some of my really giant large paintings like Nikki's totem pole that Nikki will go home with you someday. All right, so I love these big wonky Yep, so I've got the triangle shapes in there, and then I will go back in and um, echo that with some other colors. Uh, it's intentionally still black right now, but I will pop that out eventually. Um, Tori, right now the only Zentangle that I am, class that I am teaching is inside of the Sacred Circles membership and I'm also teaching a little bit live at a at a art center up in Estes Park, Colorado. I do not have plans to teach a Zentangle class, but um, I might be persuaded if I had people that were interested and also um, we could do it for one of our studio sessions in the fall as well. I do enjoy teaching it, but it's not my primary practice. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, he brought me a snack too. I haven't even had breakfast yet, so coffee and snack, but he says my hands are a mess. Me too, I love these little flowers. They're so much fun to draw. All right, I will think about 
where I can fit a Zentangle class into my schedule. So these definitely are pretty messy little henna drums here. And in my teachable at manette.teachable.com, there's a, a super cute pumpkin Zentangle class that I did last year. And are you guys wanting an intro, like a Zentangle 101 class, brand new to Zentangle, or something a little more advanced? My husband and I sat down and worked on our promotional calendar and all our plans for what's coming up. And it's going to be a busy, busy year. Nikki is brand new. Awesome. Okay. Good to know. I didn't know that, Nikki. I just assumed that you knew some Zentangle. Mm, good coffee. For my birthday in January, Brad got me a cappuccino maker and we have been, or espresso maker, we have been really loving it. It's really changed up our morning coffee. So for his birthday, I got him some nice cappuccino mugs. Um, I will find an example, Nancy, and show you. So beginner, just a bit more than beginner. Basically, we take one of Connor's sacred circle designs, and then I teach a bunch of patterns to go inside of that. They're just um, hour-long classes, but you learn a bunch of uh, new patterns, and I usually work on, you know, like a, show you all the patterns and then uh, everybody takes their time finishing them up. Okay, those henna drum are fun, but what's missing here is like these definitely, that yellow needs to get pulled out through the whole design and the blue needs to come in through the, the whole design as well. And if I were to just teach a you know a more general sacred circle class it would probably most likely be um, a zentangle class it would be a sacred circle design because that's what we're focused on all right i'm loving where this is going Awesome. I love that, Nancy. Maybe the first coffee is kicking in. So this is my third cup of cappuccino so far today, but I started early. I think my first one was at 530. Let me grab some, let that dry for just a second. I'm going to grab some of the Sacred Circle designs to show you guys. So the new uh, <clears throat> headphones are not wireless because we're trying to get better sound. So these are Connor's designs. So this is my work from over the last six months. So often I color them and then add designs and patterns to them. Okay, stop with the autofocus. So some of them are simply colored, right? Some like this one. This is one of my favorites where I colored it with colored pencil and then added Zentangle patterns over the top. That's the same design but a little simpler. I love just coloring them. 
So these are Connor's gorgeous designs. I almost always, all right, I don't know why that's focusing. Um, so there's one, this is an example of what I might teach in the class. So each of our sacred circles has a affirmation with it, right? So these are, that's another example of one that I might teach in class inside our monthly class. Some are just colored. Oh, there's one that's not colored. That one I just used my Poscas and gel pens and added fun dots and marks. But you can tell I'm a little obsessed with adding Zentangle patterns to my designs. So um, the thing to know about if you're coloring them with colored pencil, uh, Micron doesn't always work over the top of the colored pencil. So sometimes you have to kind of play with the pens and find a different gel pen, like a black gel pen or my Papermate Ink Joy are really fun. Um, and this is my evening creative practice. I, I realize that I'm like the hobbits. You know, I have my breakfast, like early morning practice, and then I have my 11 Z's practice and my dinner practice. I loved this one. It's got that little bit of metallic in here. So Connor's designs are so beautiful. Here's some that are just colored. You can tell I love the, the tangling. So all kinds of designs. But this is, you know, what we create every month in Sacred Circles. We color and we tangle and we breathe and we light a candle. Let's see. Um, okay. Pit pens work over colored pencils. I love the example. That would cover it. Awesome. You're so welcome. Um, let's get some yellow here. Um, I haven't tried the the pit pens. The the Tombow Mono Twin also works over the the colored pencil, and even just like an O3 or an O5, but it definitely the O1s don't work great over the the colored pencils all of the time. One of my favorite pens for drawing over others is a Pentel Hybrid Technica. is a gorgeous gel pen that's great for tangling, but it is water soluble. I have a tendency to make a cup of coffee and then not drink it before it gets cold. Okay, so this is wanting to have these centers be yellow. And so they may need to go white first, we'll see. And I'm undecided about what to do around the edges. No, I'm not. It needs some nice big leaves around the edges. So yeah, just that little pop of yellow. So this one is going to provide hours of fun and maybe the one that doesn't get finished because I can guarantee you I'm going to spend a lot of time with the details of this one. And I'll have to try the, the pit pens. All right, I think this one is one that's about dead. Some of these I've had for years and years, and like I hate to throw them away because they're so expensive until the absolute last possible second. And I had a dear friend, I've had a couple of opportunities where, oh, that one's way juicier, much better. Uh, people have cleaned out their studios and I have benefited from them cleaning out their studios and one of my friends who just decided she did not love Posca markers sent me a huge box of them. And Elizabeth, are you still on the call? Elizabeth is also a certified Zentangle teacher in the Bay Area. When I first discovered Zentangle on somebody's blog, actually on my friend um, Violette Clark on her blog, 
way back in 2010, she had a guest blogger, I don't even remember who it was, came in and did a thing about Zentangle and I was hooked. And I was living in Plano, Texas at the time and there was nobody teaching in my area at all. I finally found one lady who was a full-time nurse who taught sometimes. And so I hired her to come to my office and do a private lesson for me and a girlfriend. And then it just took off from there. And then one summer we came out here to Colorado to visit my parents in Estes Park. And I found a woman named Sue Clark who I don't think she teaches anymore, but I had a private class with her and did this huge, huge mandala design that I still have. And then one of my big designs was actually on the cover of my first book. Another one of my designs graced the cover of a magazine in Texas where we lived. So it's been uh, it's been a big part of my life for a long time. And I would not call what I'm doing right now Zentangle. I would call it maybe a little bit Zentangle ex inspired, but I would really call these more just sort of doodle patterns. And one of my biggest takeaways over the years from Zentangle was learning to turn your tile, turn your canvas, turn your page, turn what you're working on so that you're moving the page and not your hand and it helps with helps with your drawing skills just tremendously, helps with the, the symmetry of those patterns. I don't know why those are feeling like bumblebee stripes at the moment. All right, I think maybe some just starting with some nice big leaf shapes in the corners here and then maybe some smaller shapes. A big chunk of paint there. Yep, that's what it needed to just sort of flesh that out. Uh, great question, Blanca. These are just scraps of wood, but this is probably, and grab a ruler in a minute, probably a 10 by 10. Where'd that piece of scrap paper I had? So, yeah, this is a, you know, an 11 and a half. So I would say that's a about a, a 10 or maybe even a nine by nine. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, my friend Rebecca just gave me a whole bunch of squares. That's why all these squares are totally just random sizes. I have used gel pen, the Sakura gel pen, definitely their original classic ones or the number 10 size on canvas or the, the wood panels. And they can also be great for adding nice pops of color and details. I'm a huge fan of the Sakura gel pens. And I have tried lots of different brands of gel pens and paint markers. Posca's are definitely my favorite. I bought some Liquitex ones because I wanted, they had these just great earthy colors for a big painting that I was working on, but I don't like the tips at all. They tend to fray and they don't flow as nicely. Um, I tried the Amsterdam ones and they just kind of flooded all over the place. So I didn't, they, they were my least favorite actually. And, um, I really love the the Molotov ones. They're even pricier than the Poscas, but they have their white is very opaque and their fluorescents are the bomb. So sometimes I'll buy some of those as well. So 
So just sort of imagining all these leaves sort of flowing off the edges of the page here. Big fat round leaves. I can tell I'm getting hungry because I'm starting to think about food and 4th of July picnics. And I'm like, hmm, I should have bought some ribs to barbecue today. But I think we have some nice steaks in the freezer. All right, it's coming together, makes me so happy. Like there's something magical, I think for me about drawing these sacred circle designs, you know, watching them flow from the center out, working in the many layers of the patterns and the colors. And it's like this sort of slow unfolding of pattern and design that I find very, very soothing. And most evenings I sit in front of the TV with my hubby for a couple of hours and I always have something creative in hand and quite frequently it's one of Connor's sacred circle designs and I'm either coloring or tangling. But right now I'm sort of feeling inspired to do some slow stitching because of this just absolutely beautiful book that I got yesterday. And I'm looking sort of not super seriously, but I'm keeping my eye out for someone that prints designs on fabric so that we can get some of our sacred circles printed on fabric for slow stitching. Oh my gosh, ceviche is one of my most favorite foods and tostadas, mm, 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 mm. lucky, lucky you, I am so envious. The first time I had ceviche was, um, I'm trying to remember what the, it wasn't about uh, slow stitching. Let me look it on um, my Amazon here real quick. It's like mystical stitching or something like that. Let's see. It's absolutely gorgeous. And she has some stitching in there, but her whole approach to design um, is quite amazing. So where's orders? Don't look at how many things I've ordered in Amazon. Ma! I'm sure no one else has that problem. Amazon makes it too easy. It's called Mystical Stitches. Are you going to focus for us? It's called Mystical Stitches. And her designs are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And it was a hardcover book. I wasn't um, expecting it to be hardcover, right? Um, I guess that's what it says on there, but I'm like, oh, I just, I need that. I kept seeing it advertised in multiple different places. And so it's about using symbols and creating talismans and like she has all these gorgeous clothes that she's stitched, but I really loved the approach. Good for you for not ordering from Amazon. We don't have easy access to um, a ton of bookstores here except for Barnes and Noble and even that's not super close. I used to love embroidery and needlepoint. I don't really love to sew but I do love hand stitching. Applique course I went through a macrame phase with my my stepmom in high school taught me how to make stained glass and how to do macrame anybody else go through a macrame phase I see it's uh, making a comeback right it's funny like slow stitching in some ways is just like abstract embroidery right like and and they're calling the macrame nodding 
Okay, so I have the base design done here, and now I can have a lot of just happy, mindful fun adding pattern and marks to this and pulling out all of the colors. And Leslie, this one definitely needs some of those, you know, pops of neon on, on it, I think. My mom was an amazing seamstress, seamstress and loved to sew and did a lot of machine embroidery and um, she could never get me to sew or knit. All right, I am going to take a quick break after all that coffee and water and I will be right back in about three minutes. You did wall hangings with the embroidery. Yeah, and my aunt was a weaver, Carol, and did huge, beautiful wall hangings. Like, I mean, it's amazing what, and to see so much of that stuff coming back. I will be right back, my friends. I am back and 
Well, I have that big black one out. Um, feeling like I want to get some black lines on here and let that dry too. Aw, thank you, Blanca. I know I'm having fun. For sure. The last thing I'm going to do is finish off the center, so I feel like I want to kind of figure out where I'm going with this one, with those black lines dry. I'm probably going to have a little cleanup to do. Again, this is another example of just sort of, you know, going back and forth with different pieces. Hoping my Posca marker laughs. I, uh, lasts. I actually would use Sharpie on a piece like this as well. Just a plain black Sharpie can work great. They're just kind of kind of smelly, but I do love some nice big thick chunky Sharpies as well. And you can see just how adding the the black lines just really dramatically changes things up and I can see where I want some cleanup in my designs. I don't know what the cats have been up to lately. It's been kind of maybe worrisome like surprisingly and Diego's not asleep on my desk. Georgia has been hanging out mostly in the garage I think because there's crickets out there and so she's been having a blast being a cricket hunter. At least she's only brought a couple of them into the house. And if you're new to me in my community, I have two amazing rescue kitties from my friend Andrea Shebelu and uh, their names are Diego Rivera and Georgia O'Keefe. They, every time she would get a crop of kitties, she would name them all. And this batch was the artist kittens. And so I knew as soon as she had a group called the artist kittens that at least one needed to come home with us. And my husband's like, you know, well, if they, we have two, supposedly they entertain each other. And um, so we got two. They fight, I think, more than they entertain each other. And Andrea kept one of that group two, uh, Beatrix Potter. So she has Miss B. So I definitely, I also love the names Nancy. Um, and we were supposed to get Diego and Frida, but Frida unfortunately did not make it. We'll start building up some color here in the center. And I said that was probably a good idea because, you know, Frida and Diego, if you know anything about their lives together, they fought like cats and dogs. I got to go to Frida Kahlo's house in Mexico City when I was in grad school and the house was under construction and was supposed to be closed, but one of the guys is like, hey, we can sneak you in. So we had kind of a private tour of Frida's house, which was pretty spectacular. And uh, they had two homes and they were connected by this walkway. And it's gonna take a smaller pen. And um, okay, I'm gonna set that one aside to dry. And they had doors on either side of the walkway and her side locked, but his didn't. So he kind of had the, the freedom to sort of come and go as he pleased, but she did not. So it's, you know, the whole story was kind of fascinating and uh, he was a notorious philanderer. All right, let's hope we still have some white pens that are working. So we're going to start brightening this piece up. So we have one painting that's finished at this stage and we have 
two in progress. It's 1111. Oh, it's 1111. Great number. Fighting is entertainment for cats. It must be. It definitely it usually happens when Diego's bored and he goes after his sister and he can just be a little bear. So I love when I look up and see that it's 1111. Already liking the touches of white and how it's brightening it up. And this is like my happy place here. So we have one painting that is finished is what I started to say. So that one feels really good and complete and really love how that one came out. It kind of makes me want to do um, three grown females, Cleopatra, Lucy and Lurch, which we thought to be male. That's hilarious. Um, this one it's pretty close to being done. It doesn't need, needs a little bit of detail work and clean up. And this one, I don't know if I'll get this one finished. And then painting number four, it's a beginning of something, but I don't know what. As I'm looking at it now, actually, it's feeling like a rose. So maybe it's going to get a nice rose design on here. Man, three chasing around each other around the house must be really intense. It's crazy enough here when we have two chasing each other around the house. And for those of you who are new to painting in your PJs Live with Minette, my summer hours are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. That's 7 a.m. on the East Coast, 9 a.m. Central, and 10 a.m. on the West Coast. It's amazing how much changes just by adding that little bit of, of white and getting a little bit of glare on there. Let's see if we can just zoom in a little bit on that one. Try. So this is where it's really helpful to have various tip sizes of the Posca's to create different effects and looks. And I'm just putting lines, some straight lines around those black stripes. It's amazing what you can do with just straight lines and dots. Straight lines and dots. And painting in your PJs in the mornings is a lot like this. I usually have a process that I'm doing or a lot of times I'll pick a theme for a week or two or sometimes even a month. And I haven't quite decided what I want to focus on for July. I am open to suggestions. I'm kind of feeling called back to maybe some of the poetry prompts or other prompts. I'm also feeling drawn to, I've taken so many wildflower photos, like really up close. I'm wanting to kind of create a, a dictionary of petal shapes and practice drawing all these different flower shapes. So. I thought about doing um, a week or so of drawing flowers. I do love a good drawing practice and drawing challenge. Again, just continuing to 
turn the panel, right? So then it also being left-handed, I'm not dragging my hand through the paint. Okay, so this is definitely wanting some pops of color. All right, it's going to need, try not to turn my microphone off, some teal. And there's what I was looking for, some pink. And we have our yellow. And I'm feeling like these spirals. Need some brightening up. So I love working kind of with a palette like this where, you know, we can be reminded that we don't need to use all the colors in the rainbow and that part of that idea of, you know, finding our own unique voice and expression is really figuring out what are the colors that you love? What do those colors mean to you? How do those colors connect to what you're trying to convey? Color is a powerful tool for connecting to our emotions. There's a fun class in my Teachable. I think quite a few of you that are here with me live today have taken my color-coded emotions class. It's been one of my favorite things that I've created this year, all about the connection between color and emotions and about What's the difference between emotions and feelings? Because I find as I get older, like in some ways I have more anxiety and also maybe less tolerance and a deeper desire to just get to know myself. All right, I think I'm gonna want some pops of green in here too. Maybe this nice apple green. Because so we're going to want to bring that green, I think, into some of our leaves over here. Mm, those triangles aren't quite big enough. And I'm not being too precious about staying inside the lines. I mean, it's kind of like I created my own little bit of a, a coloring page here. Or pattern page. And again, I just love watching it evolve and emerge. And I love the process of starting with that you know, really crazy abstract background, just building up the layers of color and words and intention, and then calming that all down and bringing it back into focus with the sacred circle design. Yeah, the color-coded emotions class, awesome. Thank you, Blanca. Or do you mean a class uh, on the painting that I'm doing? All right, I managed to get my coffee drunk. Let's see. Apparently I'm really loving just these little curved parallel lines today. Maybe we need some little inner triangles here as well. So again, that black just served as a guideline. Hi mom. Great to see you this morning. Happy 4th of July. Glad you're here. Glad Roy and Polly are coming to hang out with you guys today.
and again, you know, there's just something magical that happens in our bodies and our brains just with the repetitive drawing, right? Just with the simple patterns that we often think things need to be super complex, but sometimes simplicity is the best path. And certainly in my personal life, Simplicity is often what's needed more than complexity. All right, definitely needs these little and Blanca, I'm not sure what you're referring to with the was it something I said? The Brainerd. All right, let's zoom that back out again. See how we're doing. So you can see the, the difference with that the pattern makes. And adding the color. Interestingly, I'm not loving that pink on there at all. So the pink has to go. And so I need to decide what I'm gonna do Instead, I really love the, the black and white and just the little pops of yellow. So I'm wondering if I'm going to come back in with this teal. My husband's texting me about Closer zoom auto focused on my hand. Okay, so we got to pay attention to the zoom focus. So since I'm not always looking, like if you can uh, let me know if it gets in and out of focus in the wrong way. Okay, the blue is so much better. Whew, I'm like, oh, that was just not right. And just that little bit of pink in the background, that's okay. But having that. It was too much pink, did not match. Do you guys text your spouses like across the house? Like sometimes Brad and I text each other even when we're sitting next to each other on the couch, like funny Instagram post or he often sends me stuff from Twitter. And definitely upstairs, downstairs, instead of shouting at each other. So mom, it is um, a piece of wood panel that I am painting on, just a piece of old scrap wood that a friend gave me. And um, just painting a really simple sort of floral design on here. I'm glad I'm not the only one, Tori, that texts all the time. All right, that feels better. So I'm thinking maybe some, what I need is a, uh, this beautiful magenta in a Posca, but they don't have a magenta that I know of. And all the bright colors are great for adding these pops of color too. Oh, it definitely like shifts that focus, doesn't it? That's kind of annoying. Okay, so we got to work on that. Your coffee brain, you need water now. Yeah, that's what happens to me too, Blanca. Too much coffee, then I need more water. Yep, I get it. Okay, so the flowers also need a little bit of white, some little white flecks to make them stand out a little bit. And maybe some dots because, you know, dots, you can never have enough dots. I 
Now they look like little crazy sea urchins or something on there. It does look a little bit three-dimensional in the camera, doesn't it? All right, how are we doing? 11.30. All right, so I may get three out of four paintings finished, which is going to be pretty exciting. So this one's getting near the end here. And I always say the the end for now, right? Not the not the end forever. Like this needs to go sit on a shelf and look at it and maybe take some pictures of it and look at it that way and see what what needs to get added. Hey, Allie, happy Fourth of July. Oh my gosh, Margaret, I am so proud of you that it's so exciting. I love it. Building stamina. Today I focus and you made it three hours. Fantastic. I think the the one of the things that helps me focus is having the company, right? I'm not distracted. I'm not like searching on my phone for something. I often, if I'm creating alone, I usually... I'll watch something on Netflix or I will uh, put in an audiobook and that helps me focus on my art and stay still as well because I've got something, my hands are busy and something that's telling me a story that's not me telling myself all kinds of crazy stories. Oh, hi, Bob. Great to see you. I get to see you guys twice this week. Lucky, lucky me. That's so fun. Like I can sit here and, and make dots and I know it's silly, like how fun it is to watch someone make art. I am just like everyone else. I absolutely get hooked up on, you know, Instagram or YouTube doing down the rabbit hole of watching people make art for sure. Okay, we did not like the pink. I'm wondering what about maybe nope the purple's not gonna show on there create a little bit of texture but let's see definitely just a little bit of green on these leaves help them stand out from the colorful background a little bit I also have a sense when I'm on a working on a piece of when I'm rushing it, right? Like if I just want to be done, if I'm starting to feel a little tired and I'm almost there, I can get to where I, I want to rush it because I just want to finish it so I can move on because I love the beginning of a piece more than the end of a piece. And so I also have to remind myself that I don't have to finish it right now. Right, I don't have to finish it right now. Yep, I agree. I agree, Margaret, completely. It's so much better to, to have the company. I have a girlfriend, uh, a, a business colleague and dear friend that we get together every Monday and uh, do just co-working together over Zoom or mini Mondays, any Monday that we can because it's so hard to focus on some of the detailed and administrative parts of our businesses that aren't as much fun because we're both people people like this is way more fun than you know writing email copy and it's so nice to have that that company and that opportunity to to do it all right this is looking pretty good And maybe just a little bit more pop of that turquoise. So we have that turquoise in a few different places. Mom, are you going to make something yummy for dinner today? My mom is a like spectacular cook. Has been a cook, a chef in one way or another most of her life. I was also talking mom earlier about how much you used to like to sew and how great you were at 
sewing and machine embroidery. All right, I think we can probably call this one done for now. Still thinking maybe those leaves might need a little bit of pop of color. Oops, that's not green. Where's that yellow? Yep, that's what they need. Just a little bit of brightening up. Not a lot. Just a little. See, I think it's done, but then I just have so much fun. I do this even on the, the paper sacred circle designs. Get my big box of gel pens out and I can just sit there and add layers of color and dots. Or shading with colored pencil, like the just really allowing myself to be in the sort of mindful fun of the detail work until my brain is tired or I get bored or distracted and so it's important to know when to walk away from a piece as well. If you feel yourself being frustrated, not liking what you're doing, like the most important thing you can do is simply just walk away. Let it go, let it go, and come back later. A lot of times I'll wake up in the night and have an idea for a painting that I feel stuck on, or I might, you know, walk by it during my work day if it's on my easel, and then I'll just take a sticky note and write on there, write on a sticky note what that next step is. One spiral. Oh, the little one right in the center there. I went right over that one. Is that what you mean, Leslie? Okay. I don't know why, but this just needs a little bit more bright here, a little pop of white. Okay, so I need to call it done because, uh, let's see, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Yeah, so they have, a, some of them still have a little bit of pink lingering there. So I'm okay with a little bit of pink peeking through. So that was a fun one to create. And it's all good, Leslie. Thank you. Um, it's interesting color choices for me. It feels very fun and festive, but I can guarantee you right now that this one is going to get gessoed over and turned into something else. I had so much fun creating it and I'm not feeling attached to it at all. So I don't know what's going to happen with that one. All right. So I want to come back to our sunflower here. And I want to just keep building up some color in the center of our sunflower. That may be more yellow than I want, but it is a place to start. And I'm wondering, oh, I do have a brown. What does this one look like? Oh, that's a pretty light brown. I'm telling you, making dots is so satisfying. And it's a fun way to build up color. So where I'm pressing a little bit harder, I'm getting some little, you know, some uh, pools of color there in the, the center of the sunflower. Okay, let that dry for a minute and it definitely needs some white. We also need to touch up our magenta here. 
around the edges. And I'm going to be pretty pleased with myself with finishing three paintings in four hours, especially that mandala one. Those often take me a long time to create, and that one came together pretty quickly. And in some ways, this super simple one is one of my favorites. This one and the, the first one with the shadows. That's the other fun thing about creating multiple pieces at once is, you know, you're more likely to turn up, uh, more likely to uh, fall in love with something. I love on YouTube now that um, you guys are giving me hearts and emojis like on Facebook Live. So it's fun to see them going by. So thank you for those hearts. And if you're just joining us or joined in later, we've been enjoying some painting freedom using some of my favorite ways of just getting started and then bringing a page to a little bit more completion as well. I think our center needs a little bit of this magenta in there which will help sort of marry the foreground and the background a little bit. Wow, cabrito, yum. That sounds good. I remember you told me you got some mom at the farmer's market, right? All right, let's go back to, let's see, a fine tip black. And this definitely, it just needs some character added to it. And I think maybe my fine black here is dry. But sometimes those dry, kind of sketchy ones are great. So don't throw them away for adding just that, you know, little bit of detail to. Some of the most fun paintings are sometimes the simplest. So I'm looking this one, I feel like it needs a word on it would be fun to have maybe a collaged word or phrase on it would make it feel just a little bit more finished. Yep, just enough ink in there to get those flicks. All right coming together. It's funny because it's shiny where it's still, it wants to focus on my fingers, where it's still really wet. All right, there's something just very even satisfying about that little sound of the dots and letting those little pools of color build up. And this one definitely needs some light. And just imagine the light is hitting it over there from that side. I love painting in this sort of just very loose freestyle, not too much attention to detail. I 
I love how all the yellows have kind of married together. Planes are practicing flyovers up where you are, Mom. That's interesting. All right. And it just needs a little bit more oomph. And let's brighten up that background a little bit. I don't know what it is about adding white dots to something. Just make it feel finished to me. Not just because they're fun to make. All right, this is up. Let's zoom back out just a little bit. So definitely not a perfect sunflower, a wonky sunflower but it feels like it needs, yeah, the details make all the difference for sure, but it feels like it needs maybe a word or a phrase down here. And because we've been talking so much about process, maybe the joy is in the journey. A daisy would be super fun. I love that. I'm almost wondering if it needs just little pop of blue. It's amazing how many wildflowers are blooming everywhere here right now. We didn't have near this many wildflowers last year and where I walk this morning up against the hill in the distance was just a whole field of wildflowers. Of yeah, fr oh, well, freedom would be super appropriate. That's kind of a, a, a duh, knock me over the head. I love that, Nancy. Yep. And I always think about sunflowers do represent that freedom, right? Like there's something always wild about them and how they grow. Okay, so we're going to bringing a few of those pops of colors into the center of our playful sunflower here. All right. Okay, so I love the idea of freedom on here. So I'm not loving this that petal got a little bit too long. So I'm trying to decide if I want to change it up. So the word needs to go down here because I've got all my darks now down here. Everything is paint overable, right? So let's see if I can fix up this to my satisfaction. I don't consider myself a perfectionist, but you know, there's also that ability to know when something is right and when it's not as well. And so don't be afraid to fix things. Like my wolf painting is such a great example of he got painted kind of over and over again. He got redrawn a couple of times as well until it felt like he finally had the the right shape to him. This is still needing, like I'm looking at it in the screen and there's still not quite enough contrast here. So I'm going to come in with a lot more black while that white up there dries because I want that to just have some dimension. So I'm probably going to bring some of those brights back in. Exploding firework of color. I love that. That is absolutely perfect for today. Okay, so let that set aside for just a minute. And speaking of exploding bits of color, so what this started to feel like
I love that. Um, divine intelligence. Your local artist, Joanne Landis. I love that. And um, paints over portions as the narratives emerge. Absolutely. Such a beautiful, beautiful process. Divine key. I love it. All right, so this one is feeling sort of rose-like. So let's see what we can do in our last 10 minutes here with maybe some kind of abstract rose shape. I'm going to leave that center dark. And I often take photographs of roses up super close because they are so magical. We've got some black in there, so we'll just let that black linger in the center. Thank you, Nikki. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for stopping by. Have fun with the kiddos. All right, getting a little too much black in there. Again, I love being able to see, you know, all the, the stuff underneath and behind. And I hope other people made some progress on your projects that you're working on as well. All right, loving all the colors that are still, I don't know why the focus is. Mom, I think they just look uh, 3D on the screen maybe, or because all the, the layers of, of color. And uh, all four paintings today have been on recycled wood panels, or, you know, scraps of wood from my friend Rebecca from Zendo House who makes the these just absolutely beautiful personal altars. And I'm intentionally leaving space between some of the shapes. I want that color to, to peek through and again this is going to be a fun one once it's completely dry to go in with a white Posca and draw the, the elements of the rose in, but I'm also going to come in with some white paint and see if we can add a little dimension to some of our petals. And thank you for those of you who lingered with me for the whole day. Grateful for you guys. Thanks to everyone who stopped by just for a minute or two here and there. So that black was where there was still some wet black paint. So a little bit of that black is good for creating some shadows. Sorry, it's kind of glary where it's wet. Let's see if we zoom out, if we get maybe a little bit less glare. All right, let's see if I can turn the lights a little, change our lights just a little bit. That's a little darker, but I was trying to see if I could get it a little less glary. But as long as that you want this one, Mom, the rose, it's yours. I will bring it next time I come up. And you can decide when you see it in person. Almost done with your second junk junk journal. You made two today. That's impressive. 
Awesome. Nice dose of art. Happy fourth. Happy fourth to all of you as well. I'm definitely going to want that black to get nice and dry and then I will come back in and brighten that up a little bit more. Just want to kind of vary the colors of our petals here. This is a fun one to paint. Your card deck is done. Fantastic, Leslie. Takes forever to gesso all those cards. And did you say you just took a class with Seth? You're getting ready to take a class with Seth? All right, this one is interesting. I like where it's going. It's definitely going to need more line work and more layers of color. I'm going to want to bring some yellow back into the center here for sure. Still want to get rid of those darks right there, a little too dark. Again, just turning it to look at those different directions. I don't want to overpaint it because I want to make sure that I keep some of the color and texture that's underneath. Your cat's done for now. Kids going to 50,000 person show. Whoa, you'll be home with the furry kids. That sounds lovely to stay home with the furry kids. Okay, so this rose is coming along nicely and it feels like right now it just needs to go get nice and dry and sit for a while before I decide where to go next with it. And let's see if our nice dry brush, when I'm working with acrylic I often tend to work with a very, very dry brush. That magenta is nice and opaque. And then I'll just black up that outline again, but that feels way more balanced now on there to not have that petal being quite so out there all by itself. Much better, makes me much happier. Okay, I'm being impatient and not waiting for that magenta to get all the way dry before I add my black. All right, it's getting there. We'll let it get nice and dry and add a little more touch up and I'm going to collage the word freedom on there. And I think it just has to have some of this pink in the center too. We've got all those other colors in there, but it really needs the that pink of the background so that our colors just feel harmonious. All right, so that one feels super fun. And I'm going to probably print out the word freedom on a maybe a piece of cardstock. I want this to be completely, completely dry before I add a collage element to it. So I make sure that the, the paper stays nice and white. Or I could just paint with gesso and handwrite the word freedom on there. So I'm going to think about that one. But here's what we accomplished today. So we finished, almost finished the sunflower, has one little bit of finishing to do, which feels great. 
it feels like the rose is coming along and this is kind of a really interesting fun abstract i could see me doing a, a series of these i really enjoyed that whole process i think this was my favorite for today was the reductive painting with the circles and the silhouettes and that theme of kind of seeking freedom was definitely a favorite and this one was really fun to create but not my favorite in terms of color i actually love the patterns and designs and it might be it just needs to have the colors brightened up so that's where it's at in the moment and it needs to just sit for a while before i mess it up or do something different so this one this one's coming along nicely i love them too thank you yvonne and you know even though they all ended up looking very different they all started the same way the same place and with the same palette as well so fun process and practice for me thank you guys all for being here with me today happy fourth of july to all of you or just happy day to wherever you are in the world watching please like the video that will help other people know to pop in and watch Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I didn't know if I would have people hanging out on a holiday or not, but um, super, super fun hanging out with all of you. Have a wonderful 4th of July. I will be back here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. with a regular episode of Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. Enjoy the rest of your day, my friends. Bye-bye.